Kasih mau di upload. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Dr. Didi Patel, sir? Yes, yes. Dr. Neeraj Kumar, sir? Hello. Hello. Hello, Niraj Kumar ji. Am I audible? Hello. Somebody confirm my audio, please. Hello, 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 Dr. Tusar Patel. Am I audible? Hello, Dr. Tusar Patel. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are double. Okay. Hello, hello. Uh, Dr. Tusar Patel. Hello. Yes. Hello, Dr. Didi Patel, sir. I can't hear you. Hello, Dr. Tusar Patel. Am I audible? Hello. Huh? Hello. Dr. Neeraj Kumar. Ah, yes, sir. Am I audible? Ah, yes, sir. Clearly, sir, audible. Okay, 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 okay. Dr. Didi Patel, sir? Yes, My yes. voice is clear, na? Yes, yes, your voice is very clear. 
ओके थैंक यू सो मच All the dignitaries present over here and participant, please wait for next five minutes. Uh, the our chief guest will uh, soon join the webinar, so we'll so we will meet uh, wait for next five minutes.
respected dignitaries and dear participants our chief patron sir will soon join the webinar so please bear with us for next few minutes Uh, shall we start, Dr. Didi Patel, sir? Yes, uh, uh, now we can start. Okay, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Good morning. First and foremost, I thank you, everyone, for taking time and being over here today. My name is Dr. Tusar Patel, Organizing Secretary, and I am the Assistant Professor, Agronomy. Feel privileged to welcome you all on behalf of Organizer president and convener of the webinar, as well as my own personal behalf to the virtual platform of the webinar that is on impact of climate change on agriculture. Now I invite Dr. Neeraj Kumar, co-convener of the webinar for formal welcoming of the dignitaries and participant present over here. Dr. Neeraj Kumar. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tushar, sir. Uh, before starting, uh, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Neeraj Kumar. I'm working here as an assistant professor in the College of Agriculture, Baruch, Nosari Agriculture University. So again, good morning to all of you. It is a great honor for me to welcome all of you in this uh, webinar entitled Impact of Climate Change on Agriculture, uh, going to organize today by the Department of Agronomy College of Agriculture, Nosari Agriculture University, Campus Bharuch. I heartily welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor, Nosari Agriculture University, Nosari Dr. J.P. Patil, sir. I sincerely welcome respected Director of Research, Nosari Agriculture University, Dr. S.R. Chaudhary, sir. I warmly welcome respected Dean of Faculty, College of Agriculture, Bharuch, uh, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. I cordially welcome all the faculty members, students, farmers, and all the uh, participants from different parts of the India. Many of the dignitaries who are also sharing their time with us in this event, I welcome you all. As you are all aware of the devastating impact of COVID-19 has had, not only in terms of the cases and death from the virus itself, 
but in terms of the ripple effect with the disruptions to health system and the services. When whole world is facing the problem of COVID-19 under such circumstances, it is much useful to share the knowledge and ideas by the online platforms. All the sectors are drastically affected by this burning issue, but agriculture sector is very less affected as compared to the other sectors. Coronavirus outbreaks lower the Indian economy by closing the factories, offices. However, the agriculture sector has done well and is likely to grow uh, about 3%. It is good news as it provides employment to half of the India's workforce. India registered record production of food grain at almost 300 million tons. Global warming is a long-term heating of the earth climate system observed since the pre-industrial uh, period due to the human activities, primarily fossil fuel burning, which increases heat trapping greenhouse gas level uh, in the earth atmosphere. Global climate change has already had observable effect on the environment. Glaciers have shrunk, ice on the rivers and the lake is breaking up earlier, plant and animal ranges have shifted and uh, flowering time is differentiated. Effect that scientists had predicted in the past would result from the global climate change are now occurring. Loss of sea ice, accelerated sea level rise, and longer, more intense heat waves. Climate change and agriculture are interrelated processes, both of which take place on a global scale. Global warming affects agriculture in a number of ways, including through the changes in the average temperature, rainfall, and climate extremes. Changes in concentration, change in the nutrition quality of the food, change in sea level, all are the impact of the climate change. Climate change is already affecting agriculture with unevenly distributed across the world. So this year, with the kind permission of uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, respected Director of Research and guidance of Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, uh, it is possible to organize this webinar on this very important topic. The purpose of this webinar is to provide a better understanding of the concept climate change its impact on agriculture. With this understanding, it is hoped that it will be helpful to develop the skills and spirit to the agriculture sector. In this webinar, total 746 participants are going to participate. Among 281 are faculty members, 318 are scientists, 147 are farmers, entrepreneurs, and others. Among these, uh, 484 participants from the Gujarat and 258 participants from the different states of the India. In this webinar, we have covered the major agriculture sector that is being affected by climate change. Total four lectures will be delivered during uh, the session. I hope after completion of this webinar, participants will get the good knowledge and information. I am heartily request to all the participants to attend all the lectures. Uh, I thanks once again and welcome you all in this webinar. Thank you a lot. Now, I hand over the onward session to the Tushar Wade. Thank you, Dr. Neeraj Kumar, sir, for your warm welcomes and greeting words, as well as you have also highlighted the issue of climate change in reference to global agriculture. Here and now, I request Dr. D.D. Patel, sir, convener of the webinar, who will give the introductions and overview of the programs. Dr. D.D. Patel, sir. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Tushar Patel. Here with us, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Naushari Agriculture University, Dr. J.P. Patel, sir. Respected Dean and Principal, College of Agriculture, Dr. K. G. Patel, sir, faculty members, students, and all the participants from different parts of India. Good morning to all of you. As we can say, that is the sharing of knowledge is a continuous process for development and upliftment. When whole world is facing the problem of COVID-19, under such circumstances, it is much useful to share the knowledge and ideas by online platform. And we considering this, our College of Agriculture, Baruch organized six webinars during last three months covering different important topics. And today we are here with the topic of impact of climate change on agriculture. As Dr. Neeraj Kumar has earlier told that the, all the sectors are drastically affected by the very issue of COVID-19 but agriculture sector is very less affected as compared to other sectors. Dear friends, our population is increasing by leaps and bounds, while at the same time, our fertile land is being converted into various developmental activities, wise building construction, dam and many such. 
and to meet the hunger of this increased population they have to produce more and you see during the last year 2019 20 india registered record breath production of the food grain at almost 300 million tons no doubt we have developed so many improved technologies such as agronomic practices improved varieties genetically modified organisms irrigation system but climate is still a key factor in agricultural productivity the effect of climate on agriculture is related to variabilities in local climate rather than in global climate patterns that's why we are focusing to develop the location specific technology to mitigate the impact of climate change and climate change is not a new phenomenon for us we can observe that the, during the kharif crop it is and in kharif crop is affected more by rainfall variability while rabi crops by the temperature in india 60% cultivated area is comes under the rain fed condition which is highly affected by prevailing weather condition climate change has already caused significant damage to our present crop profile and threaten to bring even more serious consequences in the future as highlighted by the world health organization looking to this it is much more important to know the causes and impact of climate change and how can we over overcome the problem of this climate change so that's why we have organized to look out this we have organized this webinar on impact of climate change on agriculture in this webinar as dr neeraj kumar has already told uh, regarding the different uh, speakers so we have invited the eminent scientists of the field that is particularly respected dr jain sarkar sir director imd ahmedabad and he has immense knowledge in the field of meteorology and has 30 years of experience i am very thankful to dr sarkar sir for accepting our invitation and sparing his valuable time for us and other the speaker that is dr manoj lunagaria associate professor and head department of agronomy uh, uh, meteorology anand agriculture university anand he has he is the ex scientist of icr and has a very much knowledge of agriculture meteorology another two speakers are dr jj patel and dr neeraj kumar having a good knowledge of his own field so this is uh, going to be a very first webinar on climate change particularly by the nausari agriculture university and it is possible due to the kind support and guidance guidance of honorable vice chancellor sir as well as director of research sir as well as our mentor dr k j patel sir so uh, i assure you that this webinar will become a very fruitful for all of us so this is all about the webinar thank you very much thanks a lot now platform is over to dr tusar patel thank you so much dr dd patel sir for giving your valuable insights on the topic that is on impact of climate change on agriculture now it is an honor and great pleasure for me to introduce the most respected personality of nausari agriculture university nausari and the president and chief patron of today's webinar for instance i begin with mr president respected dr k g patel sir dean faculty of agriculture and principal college of agriculture campus bharuch of course designation itself reflecting lots however it's my duty to say some brief about dr k g patel sir dr k g patel sir is born and brought up in farmers family he did his phd in agriculture entomology from nausari agriculture university he experienced teaching research extension and administration for more than 37 years as entomologist he accomplished 10 research project developed 29 technologies and proposed recommendations for farmers and scientists he published 76 research paper in international as well as national journals he has also contributed in developing three paddy varieties which is now notified by the government of india until now which students got the post graduate degree under his guidance he delivered more than 100 lectures in progressive farmers workshop 20 radio talks and tv talks address kedu sibirs and many other krishi melas he is a recipient of four academic 
and two research awards from icr and other reputed scientific bodies he also hold the positions of registrar and library officers presently he is working as a dean and principal of college of agriculture bharuch this is somewhat brief about dr kg patel sir now i invite dr kg patel sir to share his virtual platforms and ignite our mind with his vast experience the platform is yours sir dr kg patel sir okay good morning everybody the persons who are involved in uh, today's webinar impact of climate change on ag agriculture to be held at agnes uh, barut so again early in the morning uh, today we have with us dr jdp patel honorable vice chancellor nayu nawsi patel dr neeraj kumar dr tusar and whole the team of uh, department of agronomy of college of agriculture barut so i congratulate to all the organizers of this webinar because uh, college of agriculture bharuch has organized series of webinars and this is a uh, show the team work at this place so now the topic is very important selected by the uh, organizers and it is a uh, need of uh, today's world so friends as you know that climate has greatly reshape or in process of altering earth ecosystem also climate change has been constant process on earth but in recent times approximately 100 years or so the pace of this variation has increased many fold even we can say that and uh, some report also and it said that uh, the temperature has risen by 0.9 degree centigrade since 19th century and mainly due to greenhouse gas emission in the atmosphere as per the estimate this rise is expected to be 1.5 degree centigrade by 2050 also or maybe even more uh, the way de deforestation is uh, uh, the way deforestation is occurring the h3 emission is increased and uh, soil water bodies and air are being polluted so why the need of impact of climate change on ag agriculture overall we, we can say that the unprecedented hike in temperature has resulted in increased events of droughts floods regular patterns of precipitation heat waves and other extreme uh, happening throughout the globe as per the annual report of the weather climate and catastrophic insight the paper published by navin kumar arora in 2019 in which he and we said that uh, approximately 225 billion usd dollar losses across the world in 2018 and since 2016 the losses due to natural calamities have crossed usd 200 billion per year uh, about 95% of these losses are attributed to weather related uh, issues that is the incidence of cyclones floods and droughts are the key players and are directly related to the climate change all together the impact of the climate change is very comprehensive but it is far reaching effects are now clearly visible on agriculture sector also so why it is uh, uh, dangerous for the agriculture sector on which relies the food production and economy of the world it is also worth noting that world population is expected to 9.7 billion by 2050 which would uh, which would magnify the pressure on agriculture land to meet the growing food demand already affected by the impact of climate change as the climate change and agriculture have inextricable links abrupt change in climate conditions at such rapid pace has threatened the food security food security at global world food program wfp report of 2018 revealed that increase in crop yield per hectare is significantly slower as compared to rising in the population as per the food and agriculture organization data published in 2016 if the current situation of ghg emission and climate change continue then by the year 2100 there will be decline in the production of major seasonal crop at 20 to 45% in maize 5 to 50% in wheat and 20 to 30% in rice as if the trend continue is very near future crop losses may increase an unprecedented rate which will sustainably contribute to reduced production high food prices and it will become difficult to cope up with rising needs of the growing population so now climate change is again very dangerous 
why climate change is happening because the deforestation overpopulation and overconsumption plastic production and uh, co2 and other uh, greenhouse gases uh, play important role for the climate change and the, these are the very important things the issues will be taken into care and such types of webinar can aware the people and the changes in the agriculture due to the climate are on the positive or negative also if the positive impact we can consider that increase in productivity due to the increased co2 concentration increase in productivity at low level of temperature rise possibility of cultivating new crop varieties extend growth period reduction of heating cost for product agriculture if we consider negative impact then reduction of the productivity due to increase in temperature quality degradation due to temperature rises increase of weeds blight and pest increase of agricultural disasters such as moisture stress and droughts increase of soil erosion so change in areas suitable for cultivation that is also important if that is a positive concept so agriculture is extremely vulnerable to climate change high temperature eventually uh, reduce yield of desired crops while encouraging weed and pest problem now due to the high temperature and change in the climate the pest management become less effective meaning that higher rates of pesticide will be necessary to achieve the same level of control which can increase the uh, cost of the uh, 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 pest management also heat wave can cause extreme uh, heat stress in crops which can limit yields if they occur during certain times of the plant's life cycle that is it can uh, uh, affect widely to the pollination or the fruit set also heat waves can result in the wilted plants due to elevated transmission rate which can cause yield loss if not contained by the irrigation so heavy rains that also cause often result in flooding can also be detrimental crops and to soil structure most plants cannot survive in prolonged water lock conditions because the roots need to be yeah. so this is also happening due to climate change the overall impact of climate change on farming are expected to be negative threatening global food security changes in climate may also impact the weather availability and water needs for farming if temperature increase and more sporadic rainfall events result from global warming it is possible that irrigation needs could increase in the future in anticipation of these changes plant breeders are currently working to develop new varieties of crops that are considered to be broad a uh, drought tolerant and more adaptable to varying levels of temperature and moisture agriculture contributes to climate change by anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases and by conversion of non farm land that is forest into into land into farm land food production in vulnerable areas can remain viable but investment in the appropriate agriculture involvements are needed now because some of the most effective ways to deal with climate change like more resilient crop varieties and high stock breeds can uh, take up to 20 years to develop our government has also did efforts to combat the uh, climate change impact in india the environment act passed in 1986 after the tragedy of the bhopal similarly in the uh, in the world level our kids are also aware for the uh, climate change from uk that is european union See, see the ambassador. See that. Uh, see, known as the environmental protect act activist, and he is able to convince the world level how to protect the environment. Similarly, number of the country have passed the uh, the bill on environment protection. At least uh, in the last year, the Australian government also has passed the bill to protect the environment at global level. So this is the very important thing that uh, the policy maker has to think for that to protect the environment if it will survive on the earth. So if the uh, same thing occur for prolonged uh, for more time, then not only a problem for the human living but also problem to other living organism on the earth. So limiting greenhouse gas emission will only affect climate change in the long term beyond 50 years. The efficient use of groundwater resources will need to be incentivized. investment in r&d for the development of drought resistant crop can also help to reduce the negative impact so uh, so we must learn to adapt to the changes in climate that will occur over the next 50 years now this webinar has increased number of the lectures from the very uh, experts that are not scientists they have very good knowledge and this webinar will definitely useful for the learner uh, particularly students faculty members and those who are involved in Uh, the in the meteorological sense of view that can be useful 
knowledge in agriculture research also. Then we uh, congratulate and uh, wish good luck uh, for the best success of this webinar. And I heartily again congratulate to Dr. D. Patel, Dr. Neeraj Kumar, organizing team for conducting a webinar on such a nice topic and wish a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom and sharing the resourceful information, sir. You are rightly sensitized the issue of climate change, its positive and negative impact on agriculture with respect to fruit jobs. Thank you, Dr. KG Patel, sir, for inspiring word. Please accept our sincere thanks. Now, this is a time to introduce our most valuable chief guest and chief patron of today's webinar. In fact, it is a memorable occasion and landmark for all of us to have our esteemed Honorable Vice Chancellor, Nausari Agriculture University, Nausari Dr. Jihabai Patel, sir. He is highly trusted, commanded, and distinguished academic academicians, having significant expertise as a researcher, extension educationist, and administrator. He has served Nausari Agriculture University for more than 37 years, starting from grassroots level and achieved the highest position of university as a vice chancellor. He served with distinction as a former dean and principal, Faculty of Agriculture, NAU, for six years and provided academic leadership to the agriculture faculty. He has served in many governing council of Nausari Agriculture University. He has most of the quality as a leader and an organization builder. He's a guru of innovations. He pioneered the concept of fruit fly trap with the motto of serving farmer. His technology clearly reflects that do more less and harvest more productions because technology itself economical and nominal investment, however, contributes significantly in productions. He is well known for the technology in SAU and recognize his as a man of fruit fly management technology. For his pioneering work in research, he has received many awards and medals, including two most prestigious awards from the Honorable Former Chief Minister of Gujarat, first that is Sardar Patel Agriculture Research Award that received from Sri Kesubai Patel during 2000 for the crop paste map in Sapota crops. Second award, Gujarat Industrial Award that received from Sri Narendra Mudiji in 2012 for fruit flights. He has published number of research paper across the globe, number of students benefited and gained a postgraduate degree under his guidance approximately. Overall, his excellency is reflecting with many academic achievements. But more than these tributes, he is an extremely honest, decent, optimistic, and nice human, human being who has helped large number of people from all walk of life. Before I invite him to bless and address the occasions, I am feeling proud to sharing that Sir is recently, I mean few days back, government of Gujarat recognized him as an extremely valuable personality of Nausari Agriculture University, Nausari, and appointed him as a vice chancellor of STU University. Sir, we would eagerly wait, await for your gracious presence at this beautiful campus of Bharuj for welcoming you. However, today we are sharing the common virtual platform. Therefore, I take this opportunity to welcome you and express our sincere gratitude toward you, sir. sir I would like to inform you that College of Agriculture, Bharuj, paternity in particular, feel greatly honored and join me in sharing the pleasure of having you with us on behalf of the institutes and on my own behalf. It's give me the honors and pleasure to extend your excellency, your sincere congratulations and the heartfelt wishes on your excellency appointment as a vice chancellor, sir. Moreover, we are sure that under your great leadership, wisdom and guidance, and you strive to much greater heights and achievement. Let me once again reiterate my sincere congratulations on your success, sir. With this joy and pride, I invite you to share your blessings and view on this valuable occasion. Please, sir, the platform is yours. Yes, very good morning to all of you. Dr. Sunil Chaudhriji. Director of Research and Dean PG Studies of Nosari Agriculture University. My friend, Dr. K.G. Patel, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture, Bharuj, faculty members, students, and all the participants from different parts of the India in this very important seminar on impact of climate change on agriculture. Friends, climate change has become a reality much faster than all scenarios predicted. 
climate change is not just an environmental issue as too many people still believe it is an all encompassing threat to health to agriculture to peace and security to the very ground millions of people live on to global economy friends storms droughts droughts and rising sea levels are bleak signs of what we are facing large regions will become uninhabitable because they will be either flooded or get hardly any rain water at all global warming not only causes a change in average temperature and precipitation but also increases the frequency of floods droughts heat waves and the intensity of typhoons and hurricanes following the change in temperature and precipitation patterns the impact of climate change are also shown in various other forms throughout the world including the rise of sea level decreasing glaciers northward movement of plant habits change in animal habits rise of ocean temperature shortened winter and early arrival of spring as an acceleration of global warming effects not only ecological systems but also human life it has been an important issue both nationally and internationally approaches to deal with the issues of global warming are divided largely into mitigation measures focusing on reduction and absorption of greenhouse gases the causative factors and adaptation measures to minimize the damage by climate change for a focus has been shifted to adaptation and adaptability based on the assignment assessment of the impact of climate change and vulnerability to it <clears throat> intergovernmental panel on climate change the ipcc emphasizes that it is very important for agriculture sector to adapt adapt to climate change this is because even if greenhouse gas emissions decreases global warming will still continue for the next several decades due to its previously esteemed greenhouse gases especially as agriculture is climate dependent and thus susceptible to climate change it is very urgent to prepare adaptation measures against climate change proper counter measures drawn based on scientific diagnosis and assessment assessment of the impacts of climate change on agriculture are essential in establishing the vision and administrative policies of the future agriculture friends this will also provide a valuable information for local governments in establishing mid to long term agriculture development plans and for farming household to prepare their production plants seasonal water scarcity rising temperatures and intrusion of sea water would threaten crop yield jeopardizing the country's food security substantial yield reductions in both rice and wheat can be expected in the near and medium term crop diversification more efficient water use and improved soil management per crisis together with the development of drought resistance crop can help reduce some of the negative impacts improvements in irrigation systems water harvesting techniques and more efficient agriculture water management can offset some of these risks now it is the time to get down to earth and take urgent action on solving those issues towards a sustainable inclusive and resource efficient path friends this webinar is going to be very informative for students and faculty members and i heartily congratulate dr tej patel dr dd patel dr neeraj kumar and organizing team of webinar for selecting such a needy and very touchy informative topic i am very happy to inform you that under covid 19 situation college of agriculture baruj has successfully organized six webinars on very realistic and useful topics i wish a great success and keep it up team baruj keep it up thank you jai hind jai kisan sir for your interesting message
we are charmed by your sharp fluency and highly enlightened issue of climate change also narrated the mitigation strategies and policies in reference to climate change your session was full of passion and mean lots of lots to all of us thank you once again sir i have also take the opportunity and liberty on behalf of the institute and on my personal behalf please accept our cordial and respectful respectful invitations to visit visit the with your gracious physical presence thank you so much sir let to proceed for thank you sir sir so today i am going to uh, inform you about the uh, lectures so we are going to have the four lectures first lecture is the climate change and its impact over india by the uh, dr jain sarkar uh, director india meteorological department ahmedabad our second lecture is the impact of climate change on crops by the uh, dr manoj junagiriya associate professor in head department of agriculture meteorology uh, ba college of agriculture anand agriculture university anand gujarat and third lecture is the use of gramin krishi mausam seva project for the farmer this is lecture will be delivered by me dr neeraj kumar college of agriculture uh, baruch and our fourth lecture will be up, uh, on the topic insect and pest management under the climate change scenario by the dr jj patel associate professor college of agriculture baruch campus so uh, so this way we are going to have the four lectures on the very important topic and these all the lectures we have designed and selected and give the information about the climate change as well as best uh, uh, dr uh, tushar sir for the boat of thanks thank you neeraj kumar sir once again greetings to one and all present over here respected jp patel sir honorable vice chancellor nawsari agriculture university nawsari and chief potter patron of this webinar respected dr kg patel sir dean faculty of agriculture and principal college of agriculture and president of this webinar respect me and convene of the webinar our most valued invited guest senior professor scientist colleague participant across the nation a speaker entrepreneurs ladies and gentlemen i deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a word of thanks to all who contributed and participated for making this webinar such a surrounding success firstly i express our sincere gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor dr jhet patel sir we are grateful from the bottom of our heart to him for courteously and gladly accepting our invitation as a chief patron and grace the inaugural session sir honorable vice chancellor of the university is gifted you for gracing this auspicious occasion with your august presence sir you have always been our constant pillar of strength our word of wisdom have always us and have strengthened our step thank you for your wit grit and determination it has been immensely appreciated you have proved your metal as a grassroots leader and as a persistent contributor to the development of modern agriculture of gujarat even really for the nation dr jayati patel sir college of agriculture baruch is privileged to have you as its chancellor and also as a chief patron of today's webinar we cannot thank enough to the president of webinar respected dr kg patel sir dean faculty of agriculture sir your presence will surely be a great pleasure for all of us moreover we are highly thankful to you for your diverse vision and a fountain head of illuminating ideas for organizing the webinar your constant guidance and support make this webinar possible sir it is not been an easy transition for any of us but your leadership and positive attitude have helped pull us through we feel very fortunate to have you as our dean during this challenging time sir we are continuously impressed with your ability to unite our campus community you have fostered a sense of support and appreciation that allow us as a educator to improve our practice daily sir your brilliant ideas unconventional thinking and daring engagement in administration are appealing and constructive the positive effect of your hard work are bounded to take a college of agriculture bharush to new heights and the glory under your leadership thank you for all that you do we are eagle strong now sir i would like to also thank dr dd patel sir head of department agronomy and women of the way under his constant watch and guidance we are enabled to conduct this webinar successfully still uh, technical session is coming soon he will work extremely hard in foreground 
and backgrounds put up tireless efforts for the success of the webinars. You call sir. Well done job, sir. My sincere thanks also goes to Dr. Alok Srivastava, sir, Associate Professor and IT in charge, Baruch. He, his painful support for arranging all the IT facilities. I am also thankful to IT department, NM Nosari, uh, uh, specifically Dr. Bhavesh Chaudhary, Mr. Chirag and the team. I acknowledge the unwearing sports received from the HODs and faculties, staff member of the College of Agriculture, Bharush. I would like to express our deep appreciation for overwhelming response from the participants of the webinar. Without you, success is not possible. I show my words of gratitude to co-convener, Dr. Neeraj Kumar, sir, all the committee members, including organizing committee, technical committee, and other advisory committee. I also thanks to those who names are missed out, but directly, indirectly help to arranging and contributing for successful organization of these webinars. Once again, thank you so much for your indeed and supports. Now, I would like to hand over the virtual platform to Dr. Vaisali Surve, Assistant Professor Agronomy. She will look after the onward technical sessions. Please do join us for the technical sessions, which will start shortly, where we'll discuss the impact of climate change on agriculture at length. Thank you, Jai Hind. The inaugural session is declared as a over now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tushar, sir. Hello, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to today's session, webinar on impact of climate change on agriculture. It is a great, a great pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Jayan Sarkar, sir. Dr. Jayan Sarkar, he is a director, uh, Indian Meteorological Department, Gujarat, responsible for weather and climate forecasting services for the state of Gujarat and Dew, Daman, and Nagar, Dadar Nagar Havai. He has an immense knowledge and experience in operational weather forecasting. He has a 30 years of a research experience. He published more than 50 research papers in international and national journals. Under his leadership, a forecast of Indian Meteorological Department, Ahmedabad, has been appreciated by the Honorable uh, uh, Chief Minister of Gujarat and DG NDRF had a very much appreciated warning inputs from him which were a very much useful in distress weather situation. He has done a climate change studies over a Kutch and Saurash as well. So I would like to, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Jain Sarkar sir delivered a lecture on climate change and its impact over India. A very good morning and thank you. Just I'll start my lecture. Uh, I think my presentation is visible to all of you. Yes, sir, it is there, sir. Yeah, okay. okay. So, very good morning to all of you. I think a lot of eminent personalities are present here. Uh, since the inauguration, I am uh, sitting here and I am seeing all the talks. Uh, very good morning to all these eminent personalities. Maybe some students are also there, students, teachers, and ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning again to all of you. I think I appreciate uh, uh, the efforts of Nausari Agriculture University, particularly I think Dr. Niraj Kumar was there, who first uh, spoke to me about uh, this uh, webinar and requested me to uh, deliver the talk. And I readily agreed to deliver the talk because it was a very important uh, topic on which people should uh, uh, people are very much interested to know what is happening. 
though uh, the change and its impact on agriculture uh, i think my later speakers they will uh, speak uh, from the impacts of climate change on agriculture but i will in general i will discuss uh, discuss about climate change and its general impact over india that i will concentrate so i start my <clears throat> lecture uh, the points for discussion of today's talk is uh, climate system climate variability and climate change observed climate change over india climate change and extreme weather future climate scenario early warning and uh, impact based forecasting you know this, this is the uh, recent uh, changes in our forecasting system we have brought in that is the impact based forecasting i'll come to uh, this aspect uh, uh, later and summarization uh and now though i am responsible for giving the weather forecast and uh, climate services for this entire state of gujarat and union territories of dew daman and dadra nagar we 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 do take up uh, some research studies as well you know uh, because there is, there is some demand also from the climate change department of the government of gujarat so we 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 did take up some uh, localized studies on uh, how the climate change has impacted like the we extreme western part of our Uh, Gujarat state that is the Kutch region as well as the very important uh, region of Gujarat that is the Saurashtra region. We we did take up uh, some studies, and the results are published in uh, uh, eminent uh, Indian journals like your Current Science as well as our uh, IMD's uh, departmental journal Mausam, and the results are very much um, uh, interesting and uh, discussion worthy. I will also share some of the results of my that studies. so uh, now uh now uh the main this is the entire this is a schematic diagram of the climate system of our climate system the main uh, driving force of the climate system is the sun because sun is the source of the entire energy almost the entire energy you can see and the different constituents or components of climate system is atmosphere biosphere cryosphere hydrosphere and land surface so these are the five constituents of the climate system and if you see the atmosphere we all know that it is uh, it is uh, nitrogen oxygen argon water vapor carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide ozone and aerosols now these these h2o or water vapor carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide ozone they are called the greenhouse gases you know uh, out of these Uh, five greenhouse gases h2o or water vapor is the natural greenhouse gas and carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and ozone is your it's mainly anthropogenic causes that they are for uh, they are uh, released in the atmosphere so why they are called greenhouse gases i i, I believe that everybody knows but still just to uh, recapitulate uh, these are having the greenhouse gas properties because the basic thing is it allows the short wave radiation of the sun to pass through these gases but they they block they block the long wave radiation emitted by the earth surfaces so in this way the heat is trapped and the global warming or the warming of the environment or atmosphere takes place which leads to global warming and which further ultimately leads to climate change so that is the root cause you know because uh, of these increased concentration of carbon dioxide methane methane and nitrous oxide and of course water vapor as well uh, then we have the biosphere biosphere is you know all these uh, living uh, living bodies in the uh, marine and terrestrial kind then land surface land surface is also extremely important because uh, the characteristics of the land if you see the western ghat area you know western ghat area if you see the mumbai or along the uh, uh, western ghat area we get huge amount of rainfall and just the leeway side of this western ghat area we, we get less amount of rainfall so because here the western ghat the uh, height of the mountains uh, it's about say 1.8 1 to 1.8 km approximately 2 km so all the moisture laden we during the monsoon season all the moisture laden wind comes and hit the uh, western ghat and gives copious amount of amount of rainfall in mumbai etc along this west coast uh so that's why the land surface in the climate surface uh, climate system the 
besides the atmosphere land uh, biosphere land surface play a very crucial role then we have the cryosphere sea ice ice sheets and glaciers and hydrosphere all the all the water bodies you can say rivers lakes ocean etc so this is basically this climate uh, system is basically interactive and one influences the another you know, it's a kind of chain reaction this what uh, in this uh, uh, just a slide i'm showing it atmosphere hydrosphere cryosphere land surface and biospheres and uh, the direct effect of human activities on the climate system is considered an external force you know and the, as i told you the main driving force of this climate system is the sun i will already explained it now how the climate system works as i told you because of uh, the sun is the major uh, energy giver of this climate system so there are differential heating between the oceans and the land surfaces and because of this differential heating all these all these weather systems usually you know uh, except this maybe the uh, maybe the uh, synoptic scale system all the mainly basically this differential heating causes the different kinds of weather systems on our atmosphere now you have to understand here the two terms one is the climate variability and the climate change uh but i believe that uh, you people all know about the difference between them but still i will tell you the basic difference between the climate variability and the climate change climate change is the change of different uh, if i if i tell you from the meteorological point of view or climatological point of view mainly the long term changes long term changes as for example say in maximum temperature minimum temperature rainfall relative humidity wind speed wind direction cloud coverage etc at least at least you, you should have 10 years of data uh, if you are having more data then you can find out, uh, uh, the uh, definitely you can find out whether the decadal changes are there in this in these different meteorological or climatological elements so so climate change is at least 10 year period change if if it changes uh, however in climate variability uh, the changes is as for per per month or for a particular season say monsoon season or it's a particular year you know so that is the climate variability so climate change is long period long term change and the climate variability is a change uh, in its mean state in in a in a shorter period like in a month in a season or in a year if you see this year or even last year also in our gujarat state gujarat state got a lot of rain for this year as well during the monsoon season and in the gujarat state if you see the western part of uh, the state that is the kutch district usually it's a arid uh, it is it, it, it is having arid environment but this year even last year also it, it got a huge amount of rainfall you know it's a large excess rainfall we have received this year as well so that comes under climate variability okay uh, uh, and if it if this kind of aberration of the if this kind of climate variability go on happening you know year after year maybe at least 10 year period then definitely the mean uh, the rainfall mean of that particular area will change so that will gradually usher in climate change so that is basically the difference between the climate variability and climate change uh here i have told you uh, if you see this third bullet here a key difference between climate variability and climate change is in persistence of anomalous conditions that's what i'm telling you if some sort of anomaly anomaly in rainfall whether it is negative or positive anomaly in temperature maximum temperature or minimum temperature or any other thing if any anomalous uh, meteorological conditions go on persisting for many years then that will lead to climate change now climate change we we basically think that only human beings are responsible responsible for uh, 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 climate change but it is not uh, only the factor which causes climate change there are some natural causes as, as well there we call it milankovitch cycles i'll come to i'll come to that uh, long term climate change has been also caused by natural factors milankovitch cycle here you are seeing the three factors you know the 
earth moves around the sun and it is uh, uh, it is in a uh, elliptical elliptical path is elliptical but this the eccentricity of the path changes you know I, i'll come to the next slide if we understand better uh, see there are three factors which is responsible for you know changed output of the uh, solar radiation which is received on the earth surface uh, the variation is in the eccentricity i told you the eccentricity that is uh, uh, see the path uh, path of the uh, uh, rotating system which is which the cycle for that is one 100000 year cycle every 100000 year cycle the eccentricity changes when the eccentricity is less the path is more circular when the eccentricity is more it is more elliptical okay as the eccentricity changes so the output from the sun also changes okay uh, output from the sun the earth surface also changes so is your tilt if you if you see this one angle tilt varies from 21.5 degree to 24.5 degree and uh, the cycle here is 41000 year cycle so every 40000 year one cycle is a cycle is completed of axial tilt because of this axial tilt also the output from the sun changes received on the earth and the precession precession means your if you see the uh, spinning uh, spinning top you know it's obling the precession is obling and that because of that also the output from the sun changes and it's uh, one cycle uh, cycle takes 26000 year uh and these changes uh, play a big role in the natural climate change i i i'll show it to you uh if you see here uh this is uh, this is the more circular to more elliptical uh the path is becoming and that's why the output from the sun the amount of solar energy received from the sun and earth changes this is your uh, changes in liquidity that is tilt changes between 22.1 degree to 24.5 degree and because of that also the amount of solar energy received on the earth changes and this is your that's what i was telling you the precession because it is just you imagine it as a spinning top and it's uh, 26000 one cycle to complete one cycle it takes 26000 year and because of these three factors as i told you the amount of solar energy received on our surface changes and that also leads to natural climate change <clears throat> out of this uh, and uh, apart from this natural climate change as i told you the human beings about natural climate change we can't do anything because that will happen naturally but we human beings are uh, huge amount of release of carbon dioxide particularly because carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gases which uh, will human release because of the burning of fossil fuels and the impact we are seeing in this in this uh, figure you can see that the global temperature trend if you see here uh, almost throughout the entire globe the temperature is having the positive anomaly where somewhere it is more somewhere it is less over india you can see this uh, northwestern part of india the uh, temperature trend is having positive anomaly and if you see <clears throat> this right hand side panel uh, this is the temperature anomaly this is the global northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere you will see uh, here the time period is right from 1860 to more, uh, more it's uh, the current period and you notice <clears throat> observe that up to this 1970 there was not much not much changes not much changes in the uh, climate temperature but after that was sudden sharp increase in uh, temperature is 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 observed uh, it is the global one in northern hemisphere you will see the increase is much sar- sharper compared to the southern hemisphere simply the reason is because southern hemisphere a lot of water bodies are there all oceans are there so here the Uh, temperature change is much more sharper after 1970 onwards compared to the uh, sorry here in the northern hemisphere the uh, temperature increase is much more sharper compared to the southern southern hemisphere because we are having the big chunk of lands in the northern hemisphere 
compared to southern hemisphere. And if you see the relationship between global temperature and carbon dioxide, you see uh, up to, uh, almost you can say up to this year, 1970, uh, there is not much changes in the carbon dioxide concentration. It is, it is in carbon, carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million, and this is the global temperature in degree Fahrenheit. You see here, after this period, the both the carbon dioxide concentration and the temperature has shown a sharp increase. And that, that shows the, our concern for the, uh, this carbon dioxide uh, by burning the fossil fuels. So they are directly correlated. So all efforts are being made to reduce the release of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And effects of <clears throat> climate change here, you can see the global uh, 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 warming uh, is causing the changes in the mean from the colder, uh, colder climate to the warmer climate, as it is very much reflected here. And climate uh, uh, change, extreme, uh, what is happening, you know, even in Gujarat also, for example, you all are in Gujarat, so we, we, can, we can see warming climate, we, we, we will have more high temperatures, heat waves, wildfires, we, which we have seen already, you know, in different Indonesia, Australia, US, etc. wildfires and other consequences. Fever, cold, extreme. This is extremely important. As I was telling you, we are shifting. We, we, we are shifting from the colder uh, climate to the warmer climate. So, so in future, even even in Gujarat, if you see the Kutch district, Nalia, particularly Nalia and those areas, they are, they usually have very uh, low temperature. Uh, sometimes maybe in December and, and in January, but now gradually we will we will likely to receive less cold waves, but the intensity and frequency of heat waves will gradually increase. You know, even uh, uh, you can see that is the general trend all over the uh, all over the globe. And more extremes in hydrological cycle, you will see uh, drought, you will see heavy rains and floods, intense storms, hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, etc. Uh, fortunately, last two, three years, Gujarat, we are not having much drought, but it will come definitely. Heavy rains, if you see, if you remember last year, even this year as well, last year, Baroda <coughs> received uh, on a single 24 hours, 56 centimeters of rainfall. So that kind of heavy rain or very heavy rainfall or extreme heavy rainfall will happen in, in the changing climate scenario. If you see this year, August, uh, Gujarat, entire Gujarat state got huge amount of rainfall, both our Gujarat region as well as our Austrian Kutch. Okay. Uh, the, uh, during the month of August, we received as many as five uh, five low pressure systems. It is it is it is it is uh, what do you call it? It is more than the much more than the normal. Usually two to three we get, but this year during the month of August we got five system low pressure systems, and because of which Gujarat region and Saurashtra, Gujarat region, a lot of deficit was there. If you remember, in the month of June and July, a lot of deficit in rainfall was there. But because of this uh, August uh, huge amount of rainfall, uh, those all those deficits uh, deficits wiped out. So this thing will happen. Uh, more uh, intensity and frequency of drought will happen. Intensity and frequency of heavy rains and floods will happen. Uh, more number of storms you will see cyclonic storms uh, uh, happen. And uh, you know this uh, main amount of the total amount of rainfall will be mainly majorly. Uh, this is again your annual mean temperature for the Indian landmass. Uh, the time period is, uh, period is 1901 to 2018. If you see here, uh, every decade, if you see 1911 to 20, uh, this was the rainfall around, say, 25, just about 25. Then it is little increases there. Next decade, 41 to 50. Then 71 to 80, little increases there. But after that, 2001 to 2020 is charged. So, whatever the global warming is taking place here, you can see that it is basically after 1970s onwards, also reflected in this analysis. And the annual average temperature during the recent period, if you see, uh, we are we are we, 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 we are trying to our scientists have tried to examine what is happening in the recent period, 1967 to 2018. If you see, if you see, we are. Uh, Every 10 years, the, the annual temperature 
is increasing by 0.169 degrees Celsius, a sharp increase you can see here, as I was telling in recent periods. This is uh, the annual maximum temperature uh, rate of increase is per 10 years, 0.144 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Naturally, the temperature uh, anomaly, uh, maximum temperature anomaly is also uh, increasing, and the increasing rate for, for 100 years is uh, plus 1.04 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> this is a minimum temperature. Minimum temperature also is showing clear cut increasing trend. Uh, annual uh, minimum temperature and minimum temperature annually. <clears throat> I basically, as I told you, I adopted the time of forecast. That's basically, uh, time to time, I will I, I'll give you information on uh, these uh, different systems also. Uh, uh, usually during the monsoon season, we uh, we get the rainfall. You know, we, we basically in India, particularly in Gujarat, 95% of our annual rainfall we get during the monsoon season. That too after June 15, then you July, August, and September. Sometimes it it uh, spill over to October as well. Mainly the uh, uh, cyclone in the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. Then during the uh, onset uh, onset time, uh, offshore vortices. The mid atmospheric cyclone, you know, that gives a copious amount of uh, rainfall over this Saurashtra, Kutch, and the Gujarat region. Your monsoon lows, monsoon lows. Uh, that's what I was telling you. In the month of August, we have a lot of monsoon lo lows formed in this head bay of Bengal, and usually it moves in a northwesterly direction. That happened this year. Total five systems formed, uh, moved in northwesterly direction, and our that was the reason that the central India, inter central India, it is not only Gujarat. Entire, uh, entire Central India, like your, you can say, Central India, there is uh, Orisha, Chhattisgarh, East MP, West MP, then your uh, uh, Gujarat region, Saurashtra Kutch, and this eastern part of the other mainly systems which, which give us rainfall. Uh, this you can skip. And if you see here, uh, thunderstorm uh, uh, per year, these are the number in Gujarat, it is around. Uh, 10 thunderstorms per year happens. Hail storms are quite less in Gujarat because we have less moisture content, you know, during the month of, you can say, April and May. It is basically dry. Uh, to, to have thunderstorm, you must have moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, mainly happens in the eastern part of India, uh, uh, in this, uh, you can say, Gangetic West Bengal, West Bengal, uh, Jharkhand, Assam, and this northeastern part of India. And if you see that because of the climate change, you know, the, if, if you see the global distribution of disasters caused by natural hazards and their impacts, this time period is 1980 to 2007. Uh, you can see these three figures, these are the number of events. Uh, windstorm is cyclones, floods, uh, epidemic insects, earthquake and drought and extreme temperature. See, uh, and this is your loss of life. And this is the economic losses. To summarize, I've summarized it here, 90% of events, 70% of casualties, and 75% of economic losses are hydrometeorological hazards. So hydrometeorological hazards means all these, your uh, drought, flood, then your heat waves, cold waves, the cyclones, etc. So 90% so, so of events are of this type, seven, that causes 70% casualties and 75% of the economic losses. That's why it is very much necessary to strengthen the early warning system, which we have been doing. It. And uh, this is the early, earlier one was in the, uh, for the globe, and this is uh, impacts in Asia, almost the same type of uh, results you will get, 90% events, 70% casualties, and 65% of economic losses are related to hydrometeorological hazards. And all this is happening more because of the climate change and for which we are largely sponsored as such. And disaster, uh, as I'm telling you, increasing intensity and frequency of hydrometeorological hazards and increasing value of exposed elements due to development and demographic expansion. So that this second point, if you if you if you just have a look at it, uh, this is one of the nowadays. This is one of the major causes of losses. 
because earlier because of the increasing uh, density of population or uh, near the river banks uh, people they never used to live there go there and uh, never used to create settlement there but nowadays uh, uh, people are also going there staying there and causing a lot of landslides if you, if you remember the landslides happening in the last uh, two three years more in kerala that is the main uh, reason is this one uh, the natural hazards in india leading to disasters as i told you drought 68% of our area which is distributed in the 116 districts are prone to drought forest fire 44.44 million hectare that is the 65% uh, of our uh, forest cover is prone to prone to a forest fire and that is more so during the pre monsoon season like your april and may when the moisture is uh, is and that causes uh, and you can, that uh, one of the another trigger for pre monsoon season like your april and may quake is there uh, 50 zone 3 4 and 5 if, if you see that in our gujarat mainly the western part of gujarat like the kutch district etc they are more more prone to earthquake flood 40 million hectare uh, area is uh, exposed to flooding are more vulnerable to flood heat wave and cold wave uh, our our state gujarat state is uh, not much impacted by cold wave and in 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 changing climate scenario the impact of cold wave will be much less but the impact of heat waves will be much more and i'll show you some of the results what uh, we studied landslide uh, 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 mainly himalayas and western ghats and mostly rainfall induced uh, landslides are there and at least every monsoon season you will get get six to we are having two cyclone seasons because we are having a very big very long coastline 7500 km two cyclone season one is in your you can say march april may and by fast forward night of june and october and november though it we said this do not form then heavy rainfall and flash floods uh, during two monsoon season one is over the entire country and another another is the northeast monsoon season mainly in the southern states thunderstorm activities these are the so these are the natural hazards in india leading to uh, disasters now if you see uh, just uh, i i I'll tell you the trends in the this upward arrows means you know, just let us concentrate over parts of india there is uh, rising uh, trends in heat waves often in gujarat uh, saurashtra this is the rajkot uh, rajkot guj amdavad disa so uh, this is major part of the country we are having we are having uh, this kind of increased uh, trend in heat wave occurrence uh, this is your heat wave days heat wave uh, heat wave means uh, see heat wave duration may change you know it may it may be of say uh, at least it minimum it has to be two day duration but it can prolong up to say, even 10 days as well you know it happened it happened so the number of Trend in the heat wave days is also increasing. If you see here, uh, in major part of India, the number of days uh, of heat wave occurrence also showing increasing tendency, and and that is the, this increase is significant also uh, significant also statistically significant. Uh, this is the year to year variability of the India southeast monsoon season. And if you see the trends and frequency of because rainfall in, in India, rainfall is, uh, India is a tropical country and our entire agriculture is dependent on rainfall. So our scientists have studied the trends in the frequency and occurrence of rainfall. What is the trend? If you see the wet days, uh, decreasing trend, very light trend, decreasing trend, uh, light to moderate trend, decreasing trend, heavy rainfall, not, not much trend. Here it is showing peninsular India and east coast east coast it is showing increasing trend i think is very heavy rainfall is showing increasing trend over this part of india that is very much significant you know means the though uh, heavy rainfall days are less very heavy and extreme heavy rainfall uh, but their contribution is very big so that means intense it does indicate that intense rainfall is happening uh, happening because of this Uh, heavy, very heavy, and extreme heavy rainfall events. 
and that is much uh, could prove to be much more disastrous. As for example, last year, Boroda, we have seen within 24 hours, 56 centimeter rainfall happened. That kind of rainfall scenario we will see in future uh, more frequent, you know. Now we, we tell that it is an anomalous rainfall, but maybe it, it may happen that after 10 years, well, that will be the new normal type of scenario. Uh, this is the origin of uh, uh, rainstorms in India uh, during the South Monsoon season 51 to 2015. Uh, means these are the areas over the landmass of India where the systems, you know, the rain giving systems formed and it gave copious rainfall. Uh, series of rainfall events showing increasing trend and time trend. Year to year variability of heavy rainfall events, more than 15 centimeter rainfall over central India. It, 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 1901 to 2012 and more, we we'll see sharp increasing trend. <clears throat> so all these informations and more information, we'll get it in this uh, IPCC, IPCC site, we'll get it. Uh, now, I will, I, I, I will show you uh, some of the Okay, now uh, we, we did take up some of the studies, you know, long period data we take, daily rainfall data of uh, 1969 to 2012 we, 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 we took up and we, we have studied in Ahmedabad, Baroda, Surat, like that. 1969 to 2013 daily rainfall data was analyzed. And the major findings, if you see here, major findings is, uh, is that at all the 10 locations, the percentage of rainy days in heavy to very heavy rainfall category was the lowest. So only three to eight percent rainy days were there or days were there when heavy to very heavy rainfall occurred. But their contribution to, to the total seasonal rainfall was very high, 36 to 49 percent. You know, that means what does it indicate? There's a clear message is there that more uh, intense rainfall, that is a heavy, very heavy or extreme heavy rainfall is occurring much more. Uh, uh, and so huge amount of rainfall is getting concentrated on on few number of days. The number of days where to give rainfall occurred showed increasing trend at all the location except Bhavnagar. That we have found it out. And as I was telling you that uh, uh, we have uh, we have taken up some climate change studies for uh, for showing the what kind of climate change has been taking place. And in future climate change scenario, this is the scenario for uh, Saurashtra. And the important finding, if you see here, the projected rainfall uh, during the monsoon season based on ensemble means seven, seven GCMs we have 30, the rainfall increase is uh, During this mid medium period, 2046 to 2065, the, this increase in rainfall is substantial and rainfall in the Saurashtra region is expected to increase by 11 to 14%. Uh, from, from the current. Then another important thing is that if you see during the summer maximum temperature in May, the summer maximum temperature was projected to increase by 0.5 degrees Celsius, 1.7 degrees Celsius, and 3.3 .3 degrees Celsius during this uh, current period, that is by 2050 and by 2019. So, so so the rainfall is showing maximum temperature is showing clear cut increasing trend here localized study and it, it is bringing clear, clear picture of this increased occurrence of uh, in future the increasing occurrence of intensity and more frequent heat waves and as i was telling you at the outset that the uh, the occurrence intensity and frequency of cold waves will, will will reduce that is also reflected in our result as well Minimum temperature during this December, January, and February is uh, showing an increase uh, by 0.8 degrees Celsius current period, 2.2 degrees Celsius by 2050, and by 2094.5 degrees is expect expected. So naturally, so this is the this is very much important to the policymakers, to the agriculturists as well, because your entire climate scenario will change. The, change the cropping pattern will change. The water requirement will change, you know. So naturally, you need to think of varieties to cope up with the changes uh, 
because of the climate change in, in, in by 2050 or by 2090. This is, uh, I've shown you. Uh, adaptation and mitigation, uh, basically, you know, uh, these are the policy matters and mainly uh, IMD is also playing a crucial role in adaptation by providing proper early warning system. I'll come to that. Uh, this I will skip. Now, IMD, if you see that basically we have been, as I told you, I told you that uh, all over India, we have been giving the weather forecast. And my domain is, of course, Gujarat. And we see uh, now casting, short range. Now, validity is up to three hours. Short range is up to, you can say, up to three days. Medium range is up to 10 days. Extended range is, uh, say, two weeks to four weeks. And seasonal uh, for this entire uh, monsoon season and climate scale, more than more than one season. And earlier, uh, we were giving mainly a very low resolution forecast, maybe 20 years back, you know, we used to give the forecast for the country as a whole or for a particular state or for mid subdivision. But now we have been giving, not only giving rainfall for the uh, country as a whole, but, but we are giving homogeneous regions, state and homogeneous regions, river catchment, our quantitative precipitation forecast. Then we are giving meteorological subdivision wise forecast also. District wise forecast, we have been giving it earlier, it was not there, you know. Nowadays we are giving every every day during the monsoon season, our 33 dis districts, what kind of rainfall, what amount of rainfall, whether what kind of warning will be there that we give. We have started giving block level forecast also, our agreement people uh, knows very well. Uh, of course, though it is more of a experimental stage now, and now we are coming down to location state uh, location uh, state forecast as well. So our uh, so our uh, we are giving a very high resolution forecast with a much much better accuracy. Services you can see you can see aviation, public disaster management, climate, shipping, agriculture, and mid support for floods and power grid management. And uh, we, we we have accelerated accelerated uh, to give improved services to su sustainable urban development tourism. Petroleum. So a lot of new sectors are coming where I has started giving its forecast. This is the way how we give our forecast. Currently, if you see our accuracy of, of providing uh, accurate forecast and warning uh, has increased a lot. Basically, we give, uh, if you see the classification of our, uh, uh, our, our improved, the reason for we are giving our improved forecast is because uh, the density of observatories has increased a lot. If you see here, uh, we have now space-based observations, observations like a pilot balloon, RSRW, different wind profilers, ground-based radar. Then we have surface observatories like your automatic weather stations, uh, automatic rain gas stations, buoys, aviation and ships. Then we have very good numerical weather models. In the model the earlier, not that much effective, but uh, we are giving we are using a very high resolution, uh, effective numerical weather prediction models. And that really helps us. And our expertise also in decoding the models are much better. So our focus has become now much better. If you see here, uh, now casting, <clears throat> this is the warning activities if you see. And when you give the extended range forecast, you know, uh, say about uh, uh, that cannot be, uh, cannot be based on that, we cannot uh, take any kind of uh, uh, relief and rescue work you see here. Uh, even even uh, because that scale is not very much suitable for taking any kind of rescue and relief operation, but these regional models, you know, this, this is, uh, we can say five day, when you are giving five day forecast, okay, that is your medium range, short range, medium range, and your now casting range, what forecast we have been issuing. Based on that, the relief and rescue measures are being taken up very successfully in the entire country, in Gujarat as well. Uh, this is the calm down from 137 kilometer, has come down from 101 kilometer to 45 kilometer. And we expect to be much more accurate in days. Uh, this is your uh, track forecast skill and average track forecast skill, as I already told you. And now, as I told you, that uh, we itself, if you have seen, uh, of course, though it is in a nascent stage, we have now we have now shifted. We are now uh, shifting from giving weather forecast to impact-based forecast. IBA. Uh, why impact-based forecast? 
uh, still now, till today, till today, we have been telling you that the heavy rainfall amount will happen and how much, whether it, is, it will be heavy rainfall, very heavy rainfall or extreme heavy rainfall. But we are shifting our, uh, there's a paradigm shift now. We will tell you, we are, in fact, we have started telling you that what this heavy, very heavy or extreme heavy rainfall will do, what kind of damage it will do. So instead of telling what the, we are much more interested to tell you what the weather will do. Based on that, you can take relief and rescue measures. You know, this, that's why we, we are, every monsoon season, whether uh, when, when there is bad weather is there, we are always in touch with the uh, state administration and even NDRF also, who, 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 this is the organization which takes up relief and rescue measures. We tell them that uh, these this, this districts, it will uh, receive heavy rainfall on such and such days. And what kind of damage it will do, whether any kind of landslide will be there, any kind of flooding will be there. So that is your impact-based forecast that we have started. Uh, so to summarize, uh, I want to say that uh, climate change is leading to increasing frequency of extreme weather. The risks of climate change are inequitable with developing countries like India will be impacted more. And IMD has taken many steps towards providing, uh, for providing improved early warning uh, of disastrous weather in recent times. And impact-based forecasting, that's what I was uh, telling at the end. That Impact testing will be very much useful in minimizing the adverse impacts of adverse weather through effective disaster management. With this, I thank you very much. I thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to speak here. If any question, I can answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jay. Meanwhile, some of the participants put the answer in the chat box. So I will uh, put in front of Dr. Jayan Sarkar, sir. You will yeah. answer accordingly, sir. Okay. One of the questions is that which are the future strategy in research point of view for climate change to overcome it? See, it is a future strategy means it has to be your policy decision. You know, as I told you, that uh, the anthropogenic causes, main anthropogenic causes of climate change, uh, which we can stop is the really burning of fossil fuels. You know, that uh, as I told you that carbon dioxide is the main culprit, main greenhouse, which is responsible for global warming. And that is which ultimately leads to your climate change. So uh, it is uh, typically you have to reduce the burning of fossil fuels. You have to re reduce the, even the vehicle, vehicular pollution as well. Which, which releases N2O, nitrous oxide, in the atmosphere. So naturally, we have to cut down the emission of carbon dioxide, methane, then your nitrous oxide as well. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, actually, lots of uh, chat, uh, lots of uh, uh, message observed in the yeah. chat box. That is regarding your greetings, and uh, they are uh, highly grateful for your nice presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. If any question, I can take up after afterwards. Also. There's no issue. There's no issue. Sir, so I, I, if you permit me, then I will share your uh, share, uh, mobile number to the chat box. So he will accordingly contact you, sir. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Thank you. One more question is that what should be the best thing studying impact of the sir? I, I, I could not get you. Please uh, repeat. What should be the baseline? What should be the? In studying the impact of, uh, what should be the baseline? Okay, okay, okay. See, In studying the impact of climate change. No, see, the minimum, as I told you, that's what I told you at the outset, the difference between the climate change and the climate variability. At least 10 years of data you must have. But World Meteorological Organization say that uh, to study climate change, you must have at least 30 years of data. So if you see what is happening in 2000, how much climate change is, have occurred by 2020. So you have to use the database from 1990 to 2020, at least 30 years. If you have more data, so the it will be much more, the results will be much more relevant, you know. At least 30 years period, you can see. Thank you. One more thing, climate change impact due to six month long due to nine. Your voice is breaking, your voice is breaking. You might have observed the questions in chat box, sir. 
Is there any change in climate change impact due to six month long lockdown in country COVID nineteen? Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. See, uh, again, I will tell that uh, to study the climate change, you you must have long period data. Okay, at least at least uh, one decade or ten years more data. Yes. So with, within three four months, what has happened? I I won't say there is a climate change. that can cause the climate variability you know that can cause the cl climate variability but not the climate change okay o okay thank you sir if uh, there is no for dr jain sarkar sir uh, sir is rightly narrated the issues of climate change and global warming of course global warming is definitely the single greatest environmental impact and challenge that planet earth is facing right now we are uh, recording the hottest day and decades ever what is that the temperature of the earth sir is also discuss the human interventions with the natural resources that has significantly changed the environment and it is system since few decades sir is also highlight the dreadful climate change events like flood like cyclones disaster earthquake uh, droughts heat waves forest fire and unusual rainfall patterns sir that all are affecting one or other part of the countries so we need to answer all these questions sir this extreme events that severely severely affect the farm productivities thereby threatening the food security nutrition security economic security and livelihood of the common people sir sir is also discussing the mitigation structures what are the role play strategy uh, to address the issues of the climate change sir sir or your entire presentation is highly resource full and knowledgeable so we are highly enlightened with your presentation sir thank you so much sir i uh, hand over to dr vaisali to introduce our next speaker thank you thank you so much dr jain sarkar sir uh, next speaker uh, our uh, next speaker डॉक्टर मनोज लुनागरिया सर असोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर मेट्रोलॉजी बी ए कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर आनंद एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी आनंद ही हैज ए प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर और प्रोजेक्ट इंचार्ज ऑफ ऑल इंडिया कोऑर्डिनेटेड रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट ऑन एग्रो मेट्रोलॉजी नेशनल इनोवेशन इन क्लाइमेट रिजिल एंड जियोजी प्लान स्कीम ए सेंटर फॉर वेदर फोरकास्टिंग एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज and second one application of a remote sensing in agriculture he has worked in a network project on climate change on impact adaptation and a vulnerability of indian agriculture to climate change he has worked in a many collaborative projects on a remote sensing he awarded a msc thesis in 2005 by association of a agrometrologist india Uh, and he also got a young scientist award in 2019 by association of agrometrologist in india uh, guided a uh, four uh, post graduate and two phd students and ongoing a six students uh, here uh, he also published a research paper uh, 31 book 1 and technical bulletin 3 and he qualified a ars agricultural research service in year 2008 and selected as a scientist in icr so i would like to uh, introduce uh, so i would like to in, uh, welcome to our next speaker uh, dr manoj lunagaria sir thank you ma'am uh, thank you for uh, this lengthy introduction first of all uh, uh, i good morning to all the participants and uh, i also uh, want to thanks uh, uh, for uh, authorities of uh, navsari agricultural university and uh, organizers uh, for inviting me for uh, this talk uh, in the first talk uh, uh, dr sarkar has covered climate change uh, trends in india then uh, extreme events monsoon disaster risk post, uh, forecast service and some of the services of imd Okay. Uh, with knowledge of that, we uh, I will uh, discuss uh, what is happening and uh, how the crops will 
get affected uh, knowingly or unknowingly uh, du uh, during recent past. And I'll focus on uh, basically the processes, means I will not uh, just throw data uh, on uh, build loss will occur, but I, I will uh, try to explain all the processes, how this uh, assessment has been made scientifically, because uh, this process, knowledge of process is uh, important to make uh, the information uh, credible. So uh, I'm sharing my presentation and uh, all are requested to uh, just uh, tag the presentation. Is it visible? Hello? Yes, sir. It is, it is visible, sir. Okay. So, uh, what is climate change is uh, already been explained. Uh, the basic three things we that, uh, that is changing in the climate. The first is the global warming. We call it rise in temperature. Second is sea level rise. And third is change in precipitation pattern. And these three things are responsible for all other changes or these three changes pose impacts on different aspects of our life or uh, we can say the uh, overall biosphere or life on the earth. So either, uh, this, uh, either of uh, these three factors affect directly or indirectly or they affect integrating. I will focus mainly their impact on crop. So here, how this climate change is uh, related with uh, crop and how it poses some of the uh, threat, ill effect or positive effect on growth, uh, crop can be categorized in three ways. Uh, some effects are direct, the specific physiology, phenology, or morphology of the crop, basically crop characteristic and uh, because of its uh, genetics. The second is indirect effect, means uh, soil fertility, irrigation, pest disease, and some other uh, uh, effect that indirectly affect the crop. And third thing is the uh, our uh, activities related to agriculture, mainly socio-economic activities. How uh, this policy trades and farmer uh, act in changing environment, and how they uh, alter their crop pattern or what uh, what uh, decision they make. So basically, uh, we can categorize. This impact of climate change by this uh, three broad category, and with uh, with knowledge of this impact, we can have some uh, uh, intervention means some of the uh, adaptation and mitigation option. We go for it, and ultimately our agriculture uh, impact the production will be the net result because of um, the threat posed by changed climate and uh, our, uh, our some of the uh, actions. Now, uh, so, uh, already uh, Dr. Sir has presented uh, those trends and some of the extremes. I am just showing our study trends in extremes because uh, this uh, changes, say, temperature or precipitation, in that case, uh, warming doesn't mean that every day temperature has been increased. Usually, it uh, uh, express its in the form of extreme events, and that uh, that has been uh, well explained by uh, Dr. Sarkar. Uh, so here, in case of Gujarat, uh, we have gone for 31 uh, extreme uh, studies. And in Gujarat, we found some of the uh, five three indicators that uh, clearly shows some of the changes because of climate. Here, in case of hot night, most stations of our studies shows the warming trend, means night temperature, 
uh, increasing uh, increases mainly then uh, cold days number of cold days in a year uh, decreasing then uh, monthly minimum value of uh, day most person shows the uh, increasing trend and cool nights are decreasing uh, similar trend is for warm night warm nights are increasing and precipitation shows uh, and so most of the scenarios under climate change uh, uh, shows the uh, positive things here uh, now how we assess uh, the impact or uh, uh, the threat on the crops directly uh, by uh, these three changes uh, warming precipitation change and sea level rise so here uh, uh, most of us uh, from uh, agricultural background and we know this uh, figure very well it is uh, just a photosynthesis process this is wonderful process that uh, produce food for all the life forms each and every life form it may be uh, at any level of uh, food web it may be higher level animal or uh, primary animal all uh, directly or indirectly depends for food on this photosynthesis process here in photosynthesis here you can see that the carbon dioxide and water these two things are required and with these two things if sunlight is available it will make sugar then uh, the complex form of its starch and uh, this fat so ultimately food is produced from only carbon dioxide and water no other things are required so carbon dioxide we we usually perceive it as a just a uh, gas which is harmful uh, basically carbon dioxide is the very uh, important nutrient or we can say the fertilizer crops which Uh, which is more essential than our even uh, macro uh, fertilizer uh, or macro elements that is required by plants say npk and uh, all other nutrients so carbon dioxide uh, plant takes from uh, environment or atmosphere so carbon uh, elevation uh, or impacted uh, co2 level gives an aerial fertilization effect so it uh it improves the photosynthetic efficiency of any plant and in plant types we know that there are two types of plants c3 plants and c4 and uh, those are this category is based on the uh, production of uh, carbon uh, carbon molecules uh, under their uh, photosynthesis pathway we are here what i i want to convey here uh, here is that as the carbon dioxide increases it is uh, it it creates positive effect for plants here uh, this uh, red line it shows the c4 uh, curve and uh, this x axis is just carbon dioxide concentration in the ambient air or at, uh, environment and this y axis is the uh, carbon dioxide in this process Uh, assimilation we call it assimilation of carbon dioxide in the process so y axis indicates the how efficient uh, photosynthesis going on and uh, x axis is just concentration of carbon dioxide we know that carbon dioxide uh, has been uh, tremendous, uh, tremendously increased after mainly uh, green uh, that the starting of industrial revolution in 19th century, century and then again it was uh, boosted by uh, this uh, discovery of uh, fossil fuels so earlier level was uh, somewhere here it was about uh, 258 ppm by uh, this time so uh, here you can see this c3 has uh, assimilation rate was somewhere near here and c4 is near about its peak already it was uh, uh, c in case of c4 efficiency was near about that peak in the uh, last century after uh, this uh, 
industrial revolution continues the co2 emission increased and uh, uh, recent level or present level is this blue line it is about 410 ppm uh, uh, so we are at here now and c4 you can see that it is it has been already achieved a peak and now it is in uh, uh, we can say the plateau mode or stationary mode so further increase in carbon dioxide level will not uh, positively affect uh, will have positive effect on c4 growth but in case of c3 growth you can see that it is still a linear response as the concentration increases the positive effect of photosynthetic efficiency of the crop will continues uh, continuously increasing and it will uh, uh, it will increase in future also and we also know that most crops about 85% crops falls in c3 group only few crops uh, uh, are in c4 crop so c3 uh, crop will get benefited by increased carbon dioxide in future also and in past uh, unknowingly uh, it has uh, uh, contribution to our agricultural production means the photosynthetic efficiency may have some bit uh, role in increasing the production it may be uh, difficult to account it but its uh, role was there so this is just a uh, response of crops or crop plants in new co2 concentration condition okay and here uh, this is one of the study uh, showing the compilation of about um, uh, 770 it shows the direct uh, influence on economic yield for different types of crop and here you can see uh, that uh, sorghum which is c4 crop it has about 6% increase in uh, economic yield but uh, some of the c uh, c3 crops set up before soybean tomato lettuce all these have uh, this uh, increase uh, which is very higher than uh, c4 crops and this much of yield because here this efficiency uh, general efficiency it, uh, it also uh, in, uh, contribute to the uh, biomass but this is just a for a real production which uh, we perceive as uh, useful so uh, in case of sensitive crops like sunflower you can see the the figure it is 144 means the production may be more than double with uh, assumption of if CO2 enrichment will be uh, double of present level. Okay. So these are just uh, response to carbon dioxide. Now uh, we also know that uh, this as the carbon dioxide increases, the temperature also increases. And temperature means here uh, uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, sorry, not uh, temperature means air temperature and here I'm talking about global warming and carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gas and considered as uh, most responsible for rising in temperature. All the crops, we know that it has some uh, range for its optimal. So uh, if temperature will be in that range, the crop will have uh, better performance in terms of growth and uh, ultimately in uh, terms of yield. They say most crops uh, or most vegetation on the earth has temperature range is about 10 to 40 degree. If temperature range will be this, uh, their growth is possible and uh, their uh, production uh, can be uh, optimal. Here, uh, again, C3 and C4 uh, crops have uh, different responses for temperature. That C4 plants are uh, more adapted to the temperature and C3 uh, crops 
has less adaptation. Here, uh, this x-axis shows the leaf temperature, and leaf temperature is mainly governed by uh, air temperature and also the presence of moisture. So it is both where if temperature is very high, moisture must be there, otherwise leaf temperature will uh, suit up uh, because uh, less of uh, transpiration if soil moisture is less. So uh, leaf temperature, or you can say the air temperature, if you consider the moisture as a normal uh, moisture, at the soil moisture at normal level, then you can see as the temperature increases, C4 plants will have up to certain level will uh, have no influence and it, uh, its photosynthetic rate may be enhanced up to certain level. But after some range, it will have uh, very, uh, very declining uh, photosynthetic rate. So uh, after some range, the temperature will also uh, have negative influence on C4 plant. And in case of C3 plant, the, the range is, uh, its potential is wide, but it is at, at low. So the C4, uh, C3 plant are mainly adapted to relatively cool environment uh, with moisture, and C4 plants are adapted to uh, relatively warm environment, uh, environment with Moisture. So uh, the positive effect of carbon dioxide and negative effect by high temperature will make the ultimate impact. It is not like that. Uh, this uh, there will be positive effect and uh, uh, some uh, some case negative effect. So it will be uh, countering from both sides. Uh, the uh, CO2 may may have positive effect in C3 plant, but because of temperature higher. Uh, uh, temperature in higher range, that is, that temperature is also because of CO2. So CO2 will uh, boost, uh, potassium will also increase the environmental uh, temperature and that will ultimate uh, positive plus negative in, uh, influence create uh, ultimate impact on the this at fundamental uh, level how temperature and uh, carbon dioxide influence physiology, phenology, or morphological characteristics. How we assess uh, this impact? Because uh, there is positive, there is negative. So the tools uh, which we use since long, that is greenhouse, open temperature chamber, gradient chamber, we create complete gradient from uh, low temperature to high temperature or uh, low concentration to high concentration for CO2. And under this uh, different uh, levels, we uh, study the uh, response of plants. Here you can. So uh, nowadays, uh, the, this uh, control study has uh, limited uh, limitation to uh, consider for open environments. So open environment studies, open environment facilities have been also created. Uh, some of the facilities are at uh, IARI, then uh, ICRISAT, and also at uh, CREDA, CREDA. This first photograph, uh, it is at, uh, um, this facility is, uh, is at uh, under MICRA project at Hathnagar farm of CREDA. And it is called free air temperature elevation. Here, uh, this uh, uh, this is free environment uh, to uh, over a uh, field, and this apparatus, they uh, there. I think uh, they are thermistors, and they are used to increase the air temperature in uh, near vicinity of this crop, and the response are uh, studied. Likewise, uh, here, this test facility, it is free air carbon dioxide. Here, the carbon dioxide has been released from uh, this uh, pipe like structure, and uh, elevated carbon dioxide condition has been created in open environment to study uh, possible impact. So, these are the experiment level uh, studies. Now, the simulus has been used since long. 
um, and mainly it is uh, one component all this crop growth models it is called uh, sensitivity analysis and sensitivity analysis uh, since long has been used to assess the climate change uh, climate change uh, impact on crop so this is one of the screenshot of uh, deset proof of uh, models it has about uh, 35 crops uh, um, ranging from cereals legume vegetables uh, forages uh, fruit crops uh, etc and there are uh, many other models and some of the new models are specifically developed uh, to uh, to uh, assess the climatic impact, uh, climatic impact means they have some interface to uh, get the data uh, the projection data or the climatic uh, uh, projection data uh, that has been generated by different meteorological agencies and uh, they uh, take uh, is that as a uh, environmental data or they take it, it as a input and accordingly they uh, give the performance of the crop here uh, this is one of the early study based on this kind of model itself desert model uh, it is study of 1996 here you can see uh, here two assumptions were made first is with different degree of temperature and with, uh, with uh, and its combination with different co2 levels now this earlier study has one of the scenario which we are already there here um, uh, current level of carbon dioxide is about 410 so we are in this uh, column and the temperature rise of the earth overall it is about 0.99 the current uh, level uh, or we can say if we Uh, take the uh, baseline of uh, pre-industrial era, then it is one degree rise since then. So we are somewhere here. If we consider uh, Indian condition, it may be point one, point five two, one degree. So this much of loss, particularly in rice crop, may be there, but it is difficult to uh, account right now. So uh, we are already uh, entered in a Uh, some of the scenario which were previously just assumption now uh, this is about wheat so this were earlier uh, this, uh, uh, crop models were used with blind assumption like this uh, this much of temperature with a different category and uh, these are the different levels of co2 after that the, uh, since the uh, ipcc has been formed and uh, their uh, second and third reports has been uh, come out they have defined some of the scenarios uh, with some assumption that this much of economic development this much of emission and this much will be the intervention they uh, derived some of the scenario and based on 2020 uh, 2030 Uh, sorry, 10. Uh, this study uh, is carried out at uh, uh, that IRI, and uh, it shows the influence on wheat, how the uh, how the temperature increase and different CO2 level will influence on uh, wheat. This line shows the equal uh, production. Uh, uh, production uh, response say that this this line shows the positive response up to 20% rise in production up to when temperature will increase up to say about 1.5 but co2 rise should be up in the range of uh, 600 to 750 so it is just uh, different co2 and uh, temperature uh, different degree of temperature under different scenario Uh, and by year 2070 we will be in this box and this box shows the uh, positive up to 20 to uh, negative minus 40 but you can see that by 2070 if 
the temperature will uh, this temperature rise will be in the range of 1 to 2.5 degree then only it will be positive temperature after that it will be negative influence on wheat and wheat uh, for uh, for wheat there are many uh, other studies because we know that wheat is very sensitive to the temperature if uh, winter is warm uh, its uh, crop growth season is shortened and uh, with the grain formation form as shriveled uh, grain and production uh, decreases uh, so may have, on wheat there are many studies this is one of the early studies uh, i'm showing you now with the advancement of uh, different uh, uh, climate based uh, projects on and uh, this uh, assumptions there is requirement to refine the assumptions not uh, just uh, blind assumptions were useful to uh, make very uh, study very scientific so some of the uh, scenarios have been formed by assuming co2 emission and our uh, human activity based on year is uh, 2014 uh, and then some of the assumptions has been taken that if uh, we go for some of the scenarios here this multiple line shows the different scenarios or assumption where we assume different uh, co2 concentration uh, as a emission considering our economic or our industrial growth in future and by uh, this whole scenario has been taken a deadline with uh, 2100 so uh, this rcp 8.5 shows the this much of rise is uh, considered uh, 3.2 to 5.4 uh, then rcp 6 it is a moderate or we can say the middle path uh, path scenario then uh, this rcp 4.5 is, is uh, just below moderate and if we take some of the very uh, stringent measures to reduce the emission, even we end up with this scenario RCP 2.6, uh, it is a low emission scenario. And then also we will have rise up to 0.9 to 2.3 by end of this uh, century. So with this assumptions, impact on crop has been assessed uh, in most cases. Uh, before this earlier, there were uh, different kind of scenarios. Uh, there were uh, A, B, and one two uh, assumptions, and now uh, they are considered as obsolete. And my, um, nowadays, this RCP scenarios are used to study the different uh, uh, kind of uh, impacts uh, on different aspects. Say, uh, impact of climate change on crop or impact of uh, climate change on some of the hydrological uh, studies. But these scenarios are taken as a base for uh, study and also for reporting. Now, I have al uh, already explained this uh, tool, crop simulation is one of the tool for uh, assessment study uh, apart that uh, experiments conducted environment uh, facility here this two track uh, assessment or two track studies are mainly uh, considered to, con uh, to judge or to assess the impact of climate change on crop first is uh, historical climate condition because uh, we don't know the present cultivar or present crops uh, behavior in the past Okay. So we have to also uh, derive their performance for past, then only we can uh, judge what is the present condition and what will be in future. Here with uh, model calibration and improvement with some economic model and uh, uh, this uh, past uh, climatic projects and or past climatic scenarios has been incorporated and model gives result on it, uh, on it and ultimately we judge the overall impact. Likewise, for future, we have to uh, choose one of the scenario from RCP and according to this scenario, we will have uh, this uh, climate scale, uh, this weather models or climate models 
uh, we will have some uh, uh, climate information or we can say the weather parameters for future to attribute the future climate and that we incorporate in the crop model and then uh, with uh, other assumptions of economic development and then we will have uh, crop performance and their growth in future. Uh, here I am showing the uh, result that is uh, given in uh, uh, IPCC uh, assessment report file. Uh, three crops are be uh, are compared maize this first two uh, graph are for maize uh, second two are for wheat and third for rice and this first column shows the uh, temperate regions means uh, uh, areas of the world or the countries of the world uh, where temperature is uh, temperature is relatively cool and Tropical countries means equators, those are uh, near to uh, this um, equator. Here, in case of maize, if we go for some adaptation, there will be no negative influence in temperate region. And if we don't have some adapt, uh, adaptation, it will have slight negative influence. And in case of tropical countries like India or Mexico or any other country which are uh, close to the equator, there will have negative influence with increasing uh, temperature. In case of wheat, we know that it is very sensitive crop. If we have some intervention or adaptation, the temperate country will have positive influence. In wheat's production will increase in temperate country because any part of those countries uh, those uh, are not suitable for crop growth. Means temperature is below 10 degree, and uh, the, those areas cannot be considered for uh, agriculture. Now, with rising, uh, raised uh, air, the air temperature has been already increased. Those area may be uh, suitable for uh, cultivation of uh, crops like wheat. And if uh, there also uh, some area which is uh, not uh, falls on that regions, very cold region, they will have a negative influence if, if they uh, don't go for adaptation uh, options. Uh, in case of rice, we know that rice is heat loving crop. So immediate uh, temperature increase, you can see here up to three degree. Uh, so uh, there will do, there will do not have uh, much negative uh, uh, much uh, yield loss in case of temperate country and with some adaptation with increase of four to five degree there may have uh, positive input. In case of tropical, you can see the wheat shows declining trend and it is very. Uh, uh, we can say the aggressive declining trend with the adaptation also. As the temperature increases, there will be yield loss in uh, tropical countries like India. In the case of rice, uh, with some adaptation, the rice yield uh, may be increased with increased uh, temperature. And uh, uh, there will, if we don't go for uh, some adaptation, then uh, the yield will uh, its yield will decrease slightly. So this is just uh, overall assessment by IPCC. This is uh, one of the uh, our local study uh, at Anand, and we have uh, taken uh, the major crops of uh, Gujarat of different region with different cultivars. Means uh, I want to uh, show here that uh, this response of Crop is also uh, uh, this uh, cultivar dependent or varietal dependent. That's why the, in the adaptation option, uh, the breeding program has, uh, are considered as uh, one of the uh, major area to make or to uh, generate cultivar which can adapt in uh, environments. Here you can see the different cultivars, uh, particularly in crops, so have different uh, responses. Uh, the most uh, all the crop shows the negative uh, change in yield. Here we have taken this uh, precise scenario A to B, 
for future and uh, this shows the yield up to 2080 to 2080s means uh, scenario is uh, 2070 to 2100 so this shows the possible yield loss by the year of 2080s uh, during those uh, end of this century uh, um, uh, era and if we go uh, cultivation with this different cultivar then this much yield will be uh, yield loss will be uh, there and here uh, this cultivars in some crops say in case of groundnut this gg20 has less uh, this uh, yield loss as compared to gg2 so likewise uh, the different cultivars may have different response and we should have explore uh, better cultivar that can thrive well in uh, changed condition or that uh, in the condition which is likely to happen in future this is overall uh, assessment of uh, agriculture uh, that is the uh, source here uh, positive and negative uh, of agricultural productivity between 2003 to uh, 2080s means end of this century here this yellowish to red part shows the negative influence you can see that equator passes from here so tropical and all the subtropical countries particularly this uh, india this african countries south america australia all these have negative uh, yield and our loss is ranging uh, uh, to minus 25 so uh, we will be at more loss while if we see the temperate countries like uh, this uh, uh, north uh, part of north america canada uh, this russian part and also this uh, tibetan part of china they will have benefit because of rising air temperature because many of their uh, areas uh, where agriculture is uh, not possible they can have advantage of warming and uh, there will have a uh, production so and uh, this is the also reason that some of the countries uh, do not follow uh, mitigation and adaptation protocols and uh, treaties uh, like the usa uh, denying uh, always and uh, always blaming us for this emission and uh, recent statement about uh, our air is uh, one of the example of that now uh, here i have i have shown you that Earlier, there were blind assumptions for assessment. Uh, then some scenarios had been incorporated, and uh, this, uh, those scenarios had been development. Uh, this scenario was based on 2010. Uh, 10, then uh, some process based scenarios in, uh, used. Now, these RCPs are used. Now, this RCP also have uh, assumption with carbon dioxide emission and uh, radiative forcing and it do not had uh, this uh, consideration of economical development from the uh, uh, human side means uh, what will be the our uh, socio economical uh, change uh, for if we consider the history so Another assumption were incorporated, it is called SSPs, it is called Shared Socioeconomic Pathways. These are, uh, again, uh, different uh, assumptions like RCPs, but RCPs are mainly based on emission and uh, their radiative forcing. Here, the socioeconomical parameters were considered and those uh, parameters are also considered with uh, different models say this RCPs with uh, uh, this uh, uh, RCPs are used for uh, general uh, climate models and then uh, they, uh, they are uh, this uh, uh, climate pattern or climate data are used for crop models as I explained earlier and then yield will uh, developed. Meanwhile, this uh, SSPs are used for uh, some uh, dedicated model which incorporate this yield and uh, this uh, socioeconomic uh, behavior or our economic uh, behavior in the future and ultimately give the cropland uh, impact for 
future generations. Here, uh, this slide shows one of the uh, study uh, considering this kind of information. Uh, considering uh, SSP2, it is called uh, that uh, mid, mid road uh, scenario or mid pathway scenario, uh, means a moderate where uh, our socioeconomic behavior of human do not change much uh, from the history and we uh, steadily achieve our economic growth means our uh, GDP has been uh, maintained and uh, like so this is moderate scenario from different SSPs and RCP6 that I already uh, explained here this RCP6 is the somewhere uh, moderate scenario not very uh, aggressive uh, warming scenario or neither the cooling um, uh, or uh, means aggressive mitigation um, activities involved. It is somewhere in between. So based on this moderate scenarios from SSP and RCP, uh, these countries, these uh, different countries, say Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Europe, uh, Soviet Union, India, uh, Middle East, Asia, uh, some countries from Latin America and Southeast Asia countries uh, are given here in x-axis and y-axis shows the percent change in uh, near future. Near future means it is, uh, we are talking about 2050s and here the crops are given with different colors, say wheat, uh, rice, then uh, this coarse grain, different coarse grains uh, apart from this uh, uh, staple grains, then uh, oil seed crops and sugarcane. Here you can see the mo in this most of the countries under these moderate scenarios, the most crops shows the uh, negative influence, means there will be negative impact. Uh, and only this crop, sugar corn, uh, sugar cane, this is the C4 crop, we know that, will have positive in, uh, influence in many of the countries, but not in India. In India, none of the crop will uh, have positive influence because our location on the earth is uh, very close to the tropics and uh, here we will have uh, more, uh, uh, we can say the more worst climatic condition here this model consider um, uh, as per this scenario everything temperature co2 level then uh, uh, precipitation change everything and this is the overall assessment uh, reported by uh, the study now uh, disease and pest i'm not uh, going to explain much because uh, there is one talk on uh, this uh, pest uh, dr jj patel will uh, explain it but i'm showing just uh, uh, abruptly few slides uh, here in tropical countries these crops have this much of disease reported in uh, temperate countries and in tropical countries, this much of this. You can see the uh, as the temperature or environment, warm temperature will be there, the number of disease will be more. So as it shift toward high temperature, it is likely that uh, many of the many of the disease will uh, have uh, will, will increase. And this uh, temperate and tropical is also related with the moisture. Here in temperate moisture will be air moisture, I'm talking about uh, atmospheric uh, moisture, that is humidity, humidity will be less, and here the humidity will be more. Uh, Besides that, uh, there is a, uh, it is called long distance uh, highways or L, uh, LDD, the global LDD pathways, means some of the disease uh, travels across the continents also. Uh, say uh, one of the example is our uh, wheat rust, uh, this wheat rust uh, travel from uh, Nilgiris and the uh, extreme of south, we can say the in uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, though the Tamil Nadu is uh, not uh, actively growing state for wheat, but some of the areas uh, where uh, this wheat spores uh, remain and uh, whenever there will be have some cyclonic activity during November, sometimes this spore travel to the 
uh, central part of India, and there will have a decision. Usually, uh, say in Gujarat or uh, MP, this uh, uh, we trust is not uh, regular prevalence. Uh, but sometimes it happens, and uh, this is all. This is just an example. There are many diseases where spores are traveled by uh, trajectories of wind. Here, I am showing the one of the interesting uh, case and recent episode uh, that we have experienced since uh, two three years. It is about locust invasion, basically uh, in Rajasthan and Gujarat and uh, this uh, MP. And uh, some of the nearest. And uh, last uh, uh, during this uh, last uh, summer, uh, this uh, the this invasion was even reported in the uh, UP, uh, which is uh, rare uh, because the locust is mainly localized in uh, those uh, desert areas or nearby areas, and never uh, reported in uh, the, those uh, far extremes. But uh, uh, they were there. But uh, the reason uh, usually is uh, attributed to the climate. Whenever locust occurrence will uh, be there, some weather uh, activities has been uh, linked to it. The recent invasion, uh, this uh, recent invasion is uh, according to UN Environmental Program is because of. Uh, development of uh, their uh, locust in uh, this uh, it is called Horn of Africa, East African region, and then uh, this development was because of uh, cyclonic activity um, uh, caused by Indian Ocean dipole. So there will uh, there was an unseasonal rainfall, and in the sand, this sand locust is required a uh, moist sand for their uh, uh, development of eggs and then their uh, breeding will continue uh, for congenial environment. So congenial environment will be provided by uh, some of the cyclonic activity and the initial inoculation uh, was started by uh, in the year of 2018 uh, 18, and recent activity has been also uh, linked to some of the recent uh, this uh, cyclonic storm. Say in, uh, over the Gujarat, uh, you may have remembered this. Last year in October, there was one cyclone has been traveled like this. And after uh, a few, um, uh, we can say the few weeks, uh, locust occurrence has been observed in Gujarat and Rajasthan. And this locust. Uh, basically require uh, congenial condition for their breeding, for their egg development, and the wind uh, wind decides its path and its speed, and even the air temperature, if air temperature will be more, they will travel more during daytime, and mostly they, uh, uh, they will be stationary overnight uh, on an area where they are uh, damaged. Even their hopper development is related with uh, uh, air temperature. This is this is from the report of uh, WMO. As the air the as the air temperature will be more, their hopper development will will be uh, shorter. Means very few in a very few days they will mature. So uh, this will enhance the number of generations in a shorter span, and their population will be built. Likewise, for uh, egg inoculation period, as the uh, soil temperature increases, the egg incubation, uh, incubation, egg incubation period shortens. So that will also uh, increase their uh, population. So their population built up with rising temperature. Beside, if air temperature is more uh, with wind, their travel will be more. So uh, this is one of the uh, activity recently observed, and it is according to UN, UN Environmental Program. This is one of the symptom or one of the uh, case uh, because of climate change. Uh, this recent activity has been occurred, and that that may attribute to the very high crop loss. Now, uh, water resources 
we know that uh, as the temperature will increase and precipitation pattern will change there will be a imbalance means with increasing temperature there will be a aggressive uh, evapotranspiration loss from the crop and meanwhile if uh, temperature uh, this uh, uh, the precipitation uh, distribution uh, uh, temporal distribution their occurrence their variability has been uh, it changes as already explained by earlier speaker then it will also cause uh, crop damage uh, by um, uh, transpiration loss runoff floods and frequent drought activities and those are uh, very easy to understand so i'm not going to explain uh, it in detail then degradation of the soil is uh, also reported by uh, say uh, carbon loss from the soil with, with elevation of uh, temperature has been reported by some of the ACFEs. Then uh, uh, with the intensity of rainfall uh, and uh, dry spell, drying of the soil, so erosion and all these problems are also reported. They are also indirectly influence the uh, crop. Then direct inundation and uh, salinity increase in coastal areas will uh, influence the agriculture. So this is one of the assumptions uh, assumption that if one meter one meter sea level rise is occurred occurs, uh, then uh, how much land will be get affected and how much population will be uh, get affected. In India, about 0.4 percent land basically the coastal area will get affected and it will influence about 1.68 million people so uh, this also indirectly affect the agriculture by direct loss of land uh, in the low lying area particularly uh, say in uh, uh, in the states like goa in west bengal where sundarban uh, islands are there so agriculture directly influence by loss of land and increase the pressure on agricultural land for settlement and also uh, salinity increase with uh, pollutes the press water for irrigation. Now, uh, these are some of the uh, impacts I have explained. Besides this, the extreme events uh, directly influence uh, the agriculture and uh, I don't think uh, it is to be uh, uh, discuss because uh, uh, if everything loss, then uh, crop will uh, crop loss is obvious. So uh, direct uh, influence by disasters and uh, extreme events. I'm not explaining it. But now uh, some some of the adaptation and mitigation uh, option has been uh, explained by uh, Dr. Sarkar. But in case of agriculture, uh, mitigation and adaptation has been uh, nowadays uh, days not uh, discussed uh, separately, particularly in agriculture. Now this new concept, climate smart agriculture is uh, considered. And in this climate smart agriculture, uh, uh, use of new technologies, mean sensor based, then precision farming tools, then weather services, uh, then agromet advisory services are the one of the component to overcome the likely uh, uh, or uh, forthcoming extreme events has been considered and basically this uh, under this climate smart agriculture three components first uh, uh, first uh, this uh, concept and under climate smart agriculture is to maintain the agricultural productivity or boost the agricultural productivity and incomes of the farmer with uh, mitigation and adaptation. So, uh, so this new concept, climate smart agriculture, involves uh, mitigation for climate change and adaptation uh, for climate change, and meanwhile also maintaining the uh, crop productivity and also the income of the farmer. And under this, uh, many services from the weather side, say uh, weather forecast service, then uh, agromet uh, advisory services, then weather-based insurance that is also uh, uh, implemented in India since few years. 
then uh, weather based uh, drought assessment then uh, this, uh, the sensor based uh, uh, inputs particularly under the precision agriculture where uh, blind application of irrigation or fertilizer and other inputs are not made which contributes the to the greenhouse uh, greenhouse gases and also uh, this uh, variable rate technology uh, for irrigation also saves the water so these are all uh, things has to be used to make this adaptation and mitigation along with uh, maintaining the uh, productivity of the uh, farm uh, that is all uh, i want to explain uh, now uh, i'm uh, closing uh, this uh, talk if any of you have any uh, question or in, uh, anything to discuss uh, we can uh, discuss uh, discuss on it sir one question is observed in chat box that is regarding which are the various data required for deset software okay here uh, deset or any models uh here you can see the crop management data here in this slide crop management data means it require everything uh, when you have sown uh, then uh, which are the dates of irrigation how much water is given what is the uh, nutrient level means npk how much given what is the uh, uh, what is the amount of it everything then this uh, soil data soil data will have uh, physical chemical properties of the soil and uh, also uh, its uh, hydro hydrological property then experimental data that is mainly from the sense of the crop means um, you have uh, taken uh, means cultivar and all this and some of the its uh, uh, coefficients coefficients means uh, base temperature say wheat is then we have to wait for 5 degree or something or some some things has been uh, by default given by uh, this models and weather data so these are the uh, primary inputs it is called minimum data set that is required to create an experiment and then uh, we can go for uh, uh, running it basically there is uh, no uh, specific data requirement if you have weather data and uh, basic experimental data you can uh, use this uh, deset model no uh, special data or special kind of observations are required you just uh, explore minimum data set of deset and you will have exact list of uh, data required for it okay sir because of your length and systemic presentations participants are highly satisfied so they are normally greeting your presentation sir okay uh, anyway thank you so much sir for your knowledgeable informative presentations okay thank you thank you for inviting me okay thank you so much so you have discussed all the impact of climate change particularly co2 what is the impact of co2 on crop production and productivity what are the impact of temperature on the resources uh, natural resources as well as production and productivity you have also give some of the good example and uh, with uh, respect to gujarat sir so in general uh, i conclude that uh, gujarat facing uh, negative impact uh, because of the climate change as it uh, faced the uh, uh, crop losses up to 15 to 20 percent particularly crops like a wheat they are suffer very badly uh, with uh, climate change events you have also discuss about the uh, insect pest disease so and uh, you have also shared the example of locust so in fact overall we can consider it as a negative impact on our agricultures so we have to develop some uh, strategy and techniques that answer all these uh, questions and uh, finally in last slide you have uh, narrated about the climate smart agriculture sir so that and uh, make this uh, events Uh, too much successful thank you so much okay thank you thank you now i invite vaisali surve ji to introduce our next speaker however i uh, I, i mentioned that uh, next speakers are requested to complete their presentations within the time frame as one more presentation is still remain 
thank you thank you uh, dr tushar sir uh, but in uh, participant list two or three participant raise the hand so any query okay so thank you very much dr manoj sir okay, for sir. such a informative presentation share with us so i introduce a next speaker dr neeraj kumar currently he has working as a assistant professor agriculture meteorology department and nodal officer of gramin krishi uh, mausam seva project at college of agriculture navsari agriculture university bharuch campus gujarat he had completed his masters degree in agricultural meteorology in 2006 from ndua and t a kumar ganj ayodha up with vice chancellor a gold medal and uh, uh, dr neeraj kumar had completed his phd in agro meteorology in 2010 from gb pant university of agriculture and technology pantnagar uttarakhand he had published 43 research papers in various national and international journals and 67 popular articles in various magazines dr neeraj kumar is a member of a various 14 scientific societies he had received a dr s venkat ramana young scientist award in 2016 by a association of agro meteorologist anand agriculture university anand and he had also received a best participant award in 2015 in the icr sponsored 21 days uh, summer school at tamil nadu uh, he had also received a prestigious rashtrabhasha acharya award in 2009 for his scientific writing in hindi in vigyan pragati magazine published by nisca ir new delhi he is an author of three books and two practical manuals so i would like to welcome dr neeraj kumar sir okay thank you vasil uh, madam am i audible to everybody yes, sir you are audible okay okay डिलीवर माई टॉपिक ऑन द यूज ऑफ ग्रामीण कृषि मौसम सेवा प्रोजेक्ट फॉर द फार्मर्स and uh, uh, i'm going to discuss how this uh, project is beneficial for the farmers and how this project is beneficial for the everybody so uh, so this uh, through this project gramin kisi mausam seva is a very important project of the india meteorological department and uh, by the ministry of earth science and gramin kisi mausam seva project is launched to issue the crop and location specific weather based agro advice is for the benefit of the farming community the scheme is implemented by india meteorological department in collaboration with the state agriculture universities indian council of agriculture such also so basically this uh, gramin krishi mausam seva project is very much uh, uh, beneficial for the farmers as uh, this project is with, uh, uh, work with the farmers and for the uh, india meteorological department this is a collab uh, collaborative project between the india meteorological department and india meteorological department is running this project with the help of the state agriculture universities the icr centers uh, private organizations also is there so for the benefit of the farmer so um, uh, under this project gramin krishi mausam so seva project there are about 130 agro meteorological field units in the uh, throughout the country with the help of the seu and icr and iit also is involved in this project and uh, the amfu agro meteorological field units are covering the different at the district level 
so how this uh, uh, project is uh, functioning i will explain the main objective is to uh, improve existing district level agromet advisory service during the 12th five year plan to deliver crop and location spe specific as to farmer at block level with village level output reach in order to operate at block level there is a strong need to set an operational unit at the district level in at initial level this project was launched to cover the district level now under this project is going to cover at the block level also block level uh, with the forecasting also block level advance advisory is also going to cover hence it is proposed proposed to set up the district agromet units damu we called it damu in the country dedicated staff along with the required infrastructure will be needed at the center these stations may be col uh, collected with the existing gramin krishi uh, vigyan kendra which are operating through state agricultural universities isr institutions and ngo etc and are funded that uh, technically guided by icr so how this gramin krishi mausam seva project work i will uh, explain here the gramin krishi mausam seva project uh, uh, basically fully dedicated to the farmers in this uh, gramin krishi mausam seva project uh, with the help of the scus and other centers we have been issuing the agro advisories to the farmers every tuesday and every uh, friday india meteorological department providing the weather forecast and on that particular uh, weather forecast and the past week of data we are creating the agro advisories for the farmers so the particular agro advisory uh, whenever we create we discuss the uh, with the experts also we discuss with the agronomic expert we discuss with the entomology expert we discuss with the soil scientist pathologist and on the basis of the recommendation of these experts we create the agro advisory bulletin to the farmers and we disseminate that uh, particular bulletin to the uh, farmers so these are the uh, gramin krishi mausam seva to deliver crop and location specific as to uh, farmer at block level with the village uh, level advisory to establish district agromet units to communicate weather based agromet advisory online to the farmer in the block taluka village level to establish agromet data centers creation agromet uh, uh, aicrpm supported as research and development in the agrometrology in operational agrometrology services research and development support so network of agro met advisory services the two ways of communication system uh, we are continuously providing the information to the farmers Uh, on the basis of our expertise and in the same way we are also uh, collecting the feedback from the farmers really we are uh, collecting the what the really farmer the needs we are issuing the um, uh, information um, and our the bulletins uh, 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 incorporated all the advance and recent information whatever uh, our expert have so in this system imd basically providing the weather forecast and uh, the uh, state meteorological centers it is state meteorological centers again uh, by the value addition on the that particular forecast the forecast is sending to the uh, to the centers amfu centers and at the amfu centers uh, we are preparing the uh, uh, this bulletin to the farmers and that particular bulletin is Uh, communicated by the different channels from media service agencies it service personal contact etc now in this what we are doing we are preparing uh, different kind of the whatsapp groups also and we are uh, putting our uh, agro advisory bulletin to the in the whatsapp groups also so we are trying to communicate with the farmers what is their exact need of the farmers how they can uh, get more benefited with our bulletin so we are continuously communicating with the farmers the district, uh, district agrometrological unit may be set up at the kvk through provision of grant aid on the same pattern and is being done the mfu under existing memorandum of understanding with the collaborating university institution the main function of the district units has been to receive weather forecast from imd and prepare agromet advisory bulletin at block level for this damo will be guided by the mfu so earlier uh, we were preparing bulletin at the district level now we are going uh, at the block level uh, to the farmer decimate agromet bulletin through this uh, different mechanisms access user requirement and impact of agro advisory uh, service participate operate agri clinic and such mechanism participate in farmer fair organize uh, for awareness activities to popularize as maintain agromet observatory record observation dispatch and store data 
prepare local climatological information and database received under current uh, observation and agricultural data from districts identify weather sensitive of crop animal pest and disease and management practices prepare annual report and submit the same to designed uh, designated authorities collect feedback information from regional and narrow casting stations and uh, we are communicating this uh, our bulletin through the different mechanism uh, ddar and the fm channels kvk atma and different ngos also so basically uh, our main objective is to provide the most accurate and most updated information to the farmers uh, on the basis of our experts so in this uh, whenever we uh, create this uh, agro advisory expert committee so in the agro advisory expert committee we incorporate the different uh, experts as I, as i told you the entomologist pathologist soil scientist agronomist agrometrologist engineers also so we are continuously getting the information on the basis of the information we are providing this information to the farmers and the same way we are also getting the feedback from the farmers also exactly our bulletin is uh, beneficial for them or not if not uh, what they need uh, we are continuously incorpor incorporating that particular information on kind of information provided to the farmer district level with the forecast for the next 5 days in respect to the rainfall maximum temperature minimum temperature wind speed wind direction relative humidity cloud cover weekly cumulative rainfall forecast and crop specific agrometrological advisories are provided to the farmers so these are the uh, these are the parameters we are providing to the farmers in terms of the 5 days with the forecast under this we are covering the medium range with the forecast and under the medium range with the forecast we are providing information to the farmers about the rainfall and a different kind of the weather parameter what is going to happen in the next 5 days and our bulletin also incorporate the information of the five, past 5 days also what what happened in the 5 days and what uh, is the weather forecast for the next 5 days on the basis we are preparing the agro advisory bulletin to the farmers the agro meteorological advisory bulletin under the gkms operated to prepare by weekly weather based uh, bulletins to issue agro advisory on every tuesday and friday and occurrence of extreme uh, weather events also this is the regular our work we are issuing every tuesday uh, and friday agro advisory bulletin to the farmers and some extreme cases as uh, any cyclone is going to happen or other any other extreme activities going to happen we can also issue the extreme uh, weather bulletin to the farmers also media to inform the information is transmitted through the multimedia channel and sms to help the farmers plan from operation ac accordingly so we are we are uh, doing our best to uh, provide whatever we have created the information we are doing our best to provide the particular information to the farmers by the number of ways we are personal contacting also is there we are also uh, putting the information through the sms we are also uh, sending the information through the emails we are also sending the information to the newspapers and uh, we are continuing this and this information is on the two way system we are also getting the in the same time we are also getting the feedback from the farmers now overview of the agromet advisory services district level agromet advisory service system the, uh, this project is governed uh, controlled by the india meteorological department new delhi and uh, again uh, sending this information to the 130 agrometeorological field units and district agriculture officer of the state government farmer through the media extension service and personal contact this is the system of the this agromet advisory uh, bulletin uh, project and uh, i am very happy to inform you this project is going uh, this project is going to be very informative uh, project in the climate change scenario and uh, through this uh, project we are what we are doing we are continuously contacting with the farmers okay so our scientists and our expert persons and our uh, uh, manpower is continuously uh, in touch with the farmers whatever the farmers need we are trying to provide the information generation of agro uh, med product with the information and their departure from the normal value at a different temporal and special scale is useful for preparation of agromet advisories in view of that imd is generating of the following product as a uh, contrast on daily weekly fortnightly monthly seasonal basis of the parameter uh, temperature maximum temperature minimum temperature dial temperature so uh, all these uh, ag agromet product are being prepared by the india meteorological department for the benefit of the farmers also gridded data also is available 
and the gridded data also uh, generated by the uh, india meteorological department at 0.25 degree by 0.25 degree if you visit uh, the um, india meteorological website there are two important uh, india meteorological website and one of the is the imd.gov.in this is uh, uh, one of the site and another is the imd agreement. gov dot in if you visit on this uh, website you will get a lot of information about the india meteorological department whatever uh, is happening in terms of the meteorology and uh, if you visit on the imd agreement dot gov dot in you will see the this uh, through the gkms uh, project india meteorological department uh, covered whole country all the districts had already been covered through this under the gkms project if you need suppose if you need a particular information on a particular state so you uh, just visit to the imd agreement dot gov dot in and you first you select the state uh, suppose you select the um, any particular state and then whenever to you click the state you will get the all the districts and whenever you click the all the dist uh, particular district you will get the information the agro meter advisory bulletin in the regional language as well as in the english language also and you can you can um, get the particular information from any district now this project is going to uh, at the block level also uh, the efforts had already been made to um, uh, extend this project at the uh, block level also and the manpower in the gujarat also the manpower has had also already been recruited to to control under the block level so here india meteorological department uh, uh, as you know the india meteorological department providing the information regarding the weather forecast so weather we can uh, classify the weather forecast into the four important categories okay four important categories we can classify uh, first uh, we can classify into the now casting sometime what happened uh, some extreme weather events are there cyclonic event and other events are also there so india meteorological department provides the information to Um, in the now casting another one is the uh, short range weather forecast the validity of the short range weather forecast is about the 3 days and uh, some of the extreme events we are also um, uh, providing this information to the farmers also what is going to happen in the uh, recent in the 3 uh, days one more uh, important the very important uh, is for the farmers is the medium range weather forecast the validity of the medium range weather forecast is to 3 to 7 days or maybe 10 days and we are providing the information to the farmers what is going to happen in the next uh, uh, few days and the farmers what the farmer best can do how they can minimize uh, their input uh, cost and kaise uh, input cost ko minimize karke how they can uh, maximize their profit so here uh, this is one of the example advance of the southwest monsoon india meteorological department every year providing the long range with the forecast before the monsoon and uh, uh, they are predicting um, uh, the amount of rainfall as well as the uh, this path of the rainfall also ki jo, what would be the exact onset of the monsoon on a particular place and how much monsoonal rainfall is going to uh, occur on a particular place as we know our country is very much dependent on the rainfall activities and uh, this rainfall activities uh, whenever the imd announces this uh, weather forecast what is going to happen in the monsoon season the immediate impact you can see over the uh, market you can see over the farmers you can see over the planning you can see the how the you know farmers are uh, taking this uh, as a for benefit now this is the same about the onset uh, uh, and the withdrawal of the monsoon also these are the uh, Uh, existing existing date is the red line is the existing date and the these are the black uh, line is the new dates of the uh, monsoonal date so this is the every year india meteorological department providing this, this information similarly this is the uh, here you can see the red arrow showing about the onset of monsoon in our india basically two monsoons are responsible for the rainfall what is the southwest monsoon so the red line represent the south monsoonal activities over the india and validity of the southwest monsoon is about june to september second one is the uh, northeast monsoon and northeast monsoon is the from uh, also known as a winter monsoon so this uh, these are the different kind of the products 
are being prepared by the india meteorological department if you visit on the india meteorological department website you will find a lot of information uh, about the relative humidity over the wind speed cloud cover graded rainfall information and all are in md agreement.gov.in also and imd dot gov dot in also range of weather forecasting this is the same as already discussed the the forecast can be uh, classify into the uh, different categories now casting very short range uh, with the forecasting short range with the forecasting medium range with the forecasting extended range with uh, weather forecasting and long range of weather forecasting so these are the weather forecasting the meteorological department doing and uh, the agromet field units are uh, getting the information and preparing the bulletin for the farmers for the maximum benefit of the farmers now casting uh, comprises the detailed description of the current weather along with the forecast obtained by the extrapolation for a period 0 to 6 hours next in this time range it is possible to forecast all small features individual storms with reasonable accuracy it is therefore uh, public of hazards high impact weather including tropical cyclone thunderstorm tornadoes which cause flash flood lightning strikes and destructive winds also in broad terms now casting contribute to the reduction of the fatalities and injuries to the weather hazard reduction of the private public and industrial properties damage and to provide efficiency and saving for the industry transportation and agriculture you might have observed that recently the indian meteorological departments uh, Uh, in the extreme cases issuing a very accurate forecast and uh, re reducing the fatality reducing the fatality uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the society in addition soil moisture maps and soil moisture differences are generated using the gis software also india meteorological department is also using the remote sensing technology also for providing uh, getting the information uh, about and standardization uh, ndbi maps are also being prepared for the national and progress during the week is also prepared and duration of the major cultural operation important period in their life cycle and their most probable weather requirement is depicted how the mfus once once uh, the forecast is received the indian meteorological department continuously communicating the weather forecast to the mfus so whenever we receive the weather forecast the agromet advisory members will discuss crop condition as well as animal husbandry relating with their weather parameters after advisory receipt from the advisory member the agro advisories are being prepared in the local language in the uh, in the gujarat we are preparing in the gujarati language in the zone as well as in the english so this is the process whenever we receive the forecast we discuss the forecast with the our experts members and whatever the expert member suggest we Uh, incorporate the particular information into the our bulletin these advisories are sent to the regional meteorological centers amdavad the advisory also also sent to the imd pune for preparation of national bulletin and are uploaded on the imd website in both language gujarati and english means regional language and english bulletins are regularly communicated to the farmers kbk and ngos on a real time basis through email whatsapp group and sms around uh, uh, 79000 farmers received sms from the four districts agromet advisory bulletin are also sent by the email to the local this, this figure is uh, our four districts in the gujar mfu um, maktam the bulletin are uh, now here we are uh, discussing about the uh, mfu maktampur and under the mfu maktampur bharuch we are uh, uh, controlling the about the four districts bharuch narmada surat and tapi state department district agriculture office different local newspaper etc through email messages the weather forecast based agromet bulletins contain a summary of previous week or the next 5 days crop management which is based on weather forecast uh, to the farmers well in advance regarding rainfall amount day wise variation and other other variables also so this is the regular work of the mfus regularly throughout the year we are continuously uh, providing the information to the farmer in this bulletin the relationship between the weather crop relation and insect and disease incidents are also uh, present normalized difference vegetation index map and standardized precipitation index map are also we are incorporating in our bulletin so here you can see uh, one of the example uh, this is the recent uh, uh, example we have received with the forecast from the india meteorological department our uh, center ahmedabad and here you can see the 
rain, we are getting the information about the rainfall, temperature, minimum temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, cloud cover for the Narmada district. Same information for the Surur district, Baru district, Tapi districts. We are getting the information for the next five days. And uh, we have the past uh, five days also data with us. So with this particular data, we will uh, go to the agro advisory service and we will uh, get the proper information how to prepare our next bulletin. So here you can see one of the example of our bulletin in the English as well as in the regional language. So here you can see whether uh, this bulletin is prepared by the Department of Agronomy, College of Agriculture, North Agriculture University, our Buru Center. Agro advisory, uh, survey, advisory bulletin number, this bulletin number, this is bulletin for the Baru district, date of issue 27th and uh, whether summary of proceeding week 23rd September to 27th September. This is the information about the past week, what kind of uh, activities were occurred in the weather information. In the same way, as I told you, we have also received the next five days with the forecast from the India Meteorological department. What is going to happen in the next five days, rainfall, temperature, rate of humidity, wind speed, direction, as well as in the cloud cover information. So this is the same in the original language. So we have prepared this bulletin to the farmers and we have incorporated our best, uh, 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 as our uh, experts suggested, for the cotton crop, chili crop, what is going to happen in terms of the insect and pest management, uh, fertilizer management also we are incorporating. We are also incorporating information for the cow, pea, paddy, banana, uh, mage, what is the stage is going on on a particular um, uh, crop, uh, similarly in the regional language also. So we are incorporating the uh, most updated and most recent information to the farmers. Similarly, we are also incorporating for this cucurbit crop, vegetative stage is there. And for the livestock, we are also uh, uh, creating the information to the farmers. Keep animal well indoors during the cyclone and heavy. Uh, if there is any rainfall condition, so what we can do, uh, this kind of information we can incorporate. We, can, we also provide the information to the farmers regarding the uh, vaccination information is also there. Uh, feeding information is also there. Whatever. Uh, uh, we are getting the information uh, from our experts we are putting in the, our agromet advisory bulletin. So dissemination of agromet advisory to the farmers through the different uh, multi-channel system of like radio, Doodasan, private TV, radio channels, newspaper, internet, SMS, interactive voice response technology, Meridut app, as well as the Damini app. These are the, the two important apps are also launched by the India Meteorological Department, Meghdoot app as well as the Damini app. I will discuss later. In addition to that, the number of MUs has started sending agrometer energies through the SMS in collaboration with the National Informatics Center, Agriculture Technology Management Agency, NAWAD, Atma, other KBKs also. Agrometer advisories are also being disseminated in the both regional and English languages through the Kisan MS, SMS portal. So there is a separate portal to provide the information directly to the farmers. And the Government of India, India Meteorological Department is uh, paying for uh, the particular SMS, whatever we are sending to the farmers. With the forecast and uh, advisory under alert and warning through the SMS during extreme weather event are also issued, which enable the farmers in planning the farm operation, minimize control damage to the crop under the adverse weather condition. The service help the farmers not only in increasing the crop production, but also reducing the, the uh, losses due to the Implement weather and other problems. In order to increase the number of farmers in the Kisan portal, a system of registration through IMD website has been developed by the IMD and National Informatics Center Pune to provide weather based agreement advisory to more number of farmers through the free SMS. To avail this service, farmers are required to register their name and mobile number along with the uh, crops. So, this is also very uh, uh, good initiative taken by the IDS. National Informative Center. Uh, this is the portal is available on the India Meteorological Department website. Through uh, you can directly register yourself. If you are not able to register yourself, you can contact through your uh, agro meteorological field unit, AMFU, and they will register your mobile number of your um, uh, for getting the proper information. Here you can see one of the picture is that we are continuously providing the current uh, information to the farmers and. Uh, these are the now this is about the two uh, important apps launched by the india meteorological department this is the damini app 
बिजली चेतावनी इस ऐप के थ्रू हम ड्यूरिंग द रेनी सीजन जैसे एज यू नो द लाइटनिंग क्रिएट्स अ वेरी हजार्डस फॉर द ह्यूमन लाइफ and the crop also so we are providing the india products department is providing the information through uh, the, this damini app so this is the megdoot app and through the megdoot app we are providing the current weather situation as well as weather forecast information direct to the farmers you have the if you have the smartphone you can directly download this megdoot app as well as this damini app for getting the most recent uh, updated information about the weather activity that is being provided by the india products department as well as from the Uh, aim if you see this similarly baris uh, kab hogi uh, baris ka mausam kaisa rahega iski puri sathi ki information jo hai india meteorological department ke through jo apps shuru kiye gaye hain aur wo app jo hai aapke uh, mobile mein uh, the apps are available in the uh, play store section you can download the apps and you can get the most uh, this updated information now this is about the farmer awareness program so india meteorological department uh, um, uh, giving as, uh, information to provide the farmer awareness program to the farmers and this kind of agromet farmer awareness program is also being conducted by the amfus all the amfus are conducting and uh, under this program we are uh, directly inviting the farmers uh, at our centers and providing the information what is the gkms project what uh, how we are providing the information and how the particular information is beneficial for you and what is your need how we can update the particular information so this is the two way channel we are also providing the information we are also getting the feedback from the farmer also how we can also in enhance our services to the farmers so through this uh, farmer awareness program we are also this is one of the example of the farmer awareness program and uh, this farmer awareness program was conducted at our agrometeorological field unit uh, uh, maktapur baruch at our college of agriculture and we are also uh, directly inviting to the farmers and providing about this uh, information about this project what uh, we are doing and how we can uh, uh, work with a more uh, informative way so we are also getting the feedback the farmer receive informative uh, brochures pamphlet out uh, lining weather based farming guidelines and informations on the package and crop addresses in the district leaflets containing information about the pest and disease severe uh, weather condition crop grown under stress condition and inbuilt contains plant and the district agreement bulletin in the uh, local language so uh, through this we are providing uh, information to the farmers and these are the uh to uh, as i told you in the beginning we have the two important uh, india meteorological department websites one of the website is the imd agreement.gov.in through this imd agreement.gov.in you can get get the lot of information you can collect the, about agreement uh, observation forecast agromet product agromet advisory service other services do's and don't and other links are also there and this in this section you can get the uh, what is going on the recent feedback for the agromet advisory services english and hindi so through this website you can if you simple visit uh, this in imd uh, agreement.gov.in and uh, if you inform the farmers or uh, uh, scientific person also uh, about this uh, imd agreement.gov.in a lot of information can be disseminated to the farmers a lot of information Um, beneficial for the uh, for student also scientific community also except the other website is the mausam uh, dot imd dot gov dot in so through this website uh, we can collect the, the recent information about the uh, meteorological condition uh, every very through this india map you click anywhere you will get the particular information sunrise and set monsoon the moon rise moon set and this is about the cloud cover condition this is one of the example if you explore more this website you will find the lot of information um, that is being um, provided provided by the india meteorological department rainfall information monsoon information cyclone information agro advisory services climate services urban needs with the for, uh, rainfall forecast extended rain uh, model guidance all india with a forecast bulletin tourism forecast seasonal forecast five days subregional rainfall forecast interactive track of cyclone shorten with the forecast guidance so lot of information if you click on these icons you will uh, get the more and more information about the meteorological condition that is um, going on in our country similarly if you visit on the website similar uh, of the different kind of the books are also being published by the india meteorological department uh, this is one of the example the climate profile of india 
uh, S D T R A and Ajit Tyagi. This book was published uh, in the past, and this kind of the several information and the several free books are also available on the Indian Meteorological Department website, and uh, through this we can. Uh, get benefited also this is one of the example this kind of the di different kind of the maps are also available on the indian meteorological department this is the hydrological uh, uh, division uh, created this uh, information indian map uh, from this period and what kind of the hydrological information is in from india you can get through this a lot of information um, is can Uh, generated by the Indian Meteorological Department for the benefit of the farmers, for benefit of the stakeholders. Continuously, uh, Indian Meteorological Department and uh, our MFUs and our the other IIT centers and the other private organizations also we are uh, doing best for farmers. And uh, I assure you that this uh, Indian Meteorological Department Gramin Kirsi Mosam Project uh, Seva Project is one of the very beneficial project for the farmers in the coming future. farmers are getting the most updated information uh, 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 that is being provided by the indian meteorological department and uh, i hope this uh, information must be uh, communicated to the farmers we are also mfus are also doing um, the best to communicate this kind of information to the farmers but the each uh, if you know the farmers of your level um, uh, for your particular area so we sh should uh, communicate this knowledge this kind of the project is going on through the indian meteorological department and icr and uh, we should get the benefited also and the md experts as well as the in the in agriculture universities also there are the separate departments for the agriculture meteorology department and agriculture meteorology department is purely dedicated to the meteorological and agricultural services to the farmers okay thank you so much Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Neeraj Kumar sir, for your nice presentations. However, I have received one questions from Dr. Sushil Saxena sir. Ha. Does this project and service provided any information related to pest and disease in specific locality, which may be taluka or specific location or agro ecosystem? I think uh, this uh, question is satisfied. Uh, in your presentation, you have already discussed about uh, this. Uh, in the bulletins, you have mentioned all the package of practices related to crop productions. so uh, uh, through this query we can say we are actually uh, on the regular basis we are creating the bulletin for the farmers every tuesday and friday and uh, the prevailing weather conditions are very much associated for this pest and disease uh, kind of information and our expert entomologist and pathologist we are whenever we go with the weather forecast to the uh, our experts and our experts are continuously suggesting the what kind of um, Conditions can occur, and what uh, are the mitigation measures? So, if you continuously watch our bulletins, you will uh, definitely you will find the weather forecast also, and you will definitely find the uh, remedy of that particular disease also. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think no further questions I observed in chat box. So, thank you so much, Dr. Neeraj Kumar sir. for your nice presentations uh, you have deliberated the functions and importance of gkms project and how the end users take the benefits of this project uh, i acknowledge your presentations your work on behalf of uh, the administrator as well as uh, head of department agronomy uh, actually the agrometeorological cell of uh, this college it's one of the pride feeder of the agriculture college thank you so much so Uh, without taking much more time i invite uh, vaishali survey to directly introduce our next speaker thank you dr thank ha huh, thank you dr tushar sir so next presenter dr jayesh patel sir associate professor department of campus he publish a 71 research papers in different national and international journal journals uh, he publish a total uh, 102 popular articles six book booklets Uh, seven books published and uh, also attend a training course number of uh, number is a five and development of agro uh, agro technological for farmers is a 26 and uh, he uh, recommendation his recommendations for scientific community five and he handled a, uh, as a principal investigator project uh, of 21 and he tv programs given a 19 and he guided a postgraduate students 13 so i would like to uh, welcome dr jayesh patel sir kanmani kanmani 
डॉक्टर जयेश पटेल सर डिलीवर्ड लेक्चर ऑन इंसेक्ट एंड पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट अंडर क्लाइमेट चेंज सिनेरियो डॉक्टर जयेश सर डॉक्टर जे जे पटेल सर प्लीज स्विच ऑन योर माइक्रोफोन एंड वीडियो हेलो Dr. Jeje Patel sir. Ah, is it audible to your, all of you? Your voice is clear and your screen is also visible. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, once again welcome you all of you. I am very thankful to the organizing committee that have given me opportunity to give a lecture that is insect space management under climate change scenario. For better convenience, I have divided my whole topic into introduction. What is the climate change? impact of climate change on agriculture on insect pests in general what is the impact of different climate factors like temperature co2 precipitation what is the role of climate change on insect pest outbreak possible impacts of climate change on insect pest future challenges in india conclusion and finally future thrust the reader has already what is climate climate is a measure measure of the average pattern of variation in temperature humidity atmosphere pressure wind precipitation atmospheric particle con and other major variables in a given region over long period of time it has been already discussed by various lecturers what is climate change it refers to change of climate that attributed or directly or indirectly by human activity that alters the composition of the global atmosphere and climate variably observed over comparable time period it is it composes the long run pattern of numerous material factors that is temperature humidity atmospheric pressure wind rainfall sun shines in a given local sun for a longer period past some decades the gaseous composition of earth atmosphere is undergoing a significant change largely through increase emission form energy sector industrial sector agricultural sector wind speed deforestation that take took about the past changes in land use land management practices there are also responsible for the changing on the climates this anthropogenic activities are resulting in increased emission of active gases that is carbon dioxide methane and nitrogen oxide popular known as greenhouse gases on the other hand carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere has increased drastically from 280 ppm to 370 ppm and is likely to be doubled in 2100 similarly temperature also increased between 1.1 degree celsius to 6.4 degree celsius by the end of 21 century over past 100 years the global temperature has increased by 0.8 degree celsius and is expected to reach 1.1 to 5.4 degree celsius by the end of the next century so what are the changes taking place into the climate they have more impact on the insect pest population the global warming is expected to lead the other regional belt changes the climate in the climate related parameters such as rainfall soil moisture and sea level snow cover is also reported to be gradually decreasing this change is attributed mainly to the over exploitation and misuse of natural resources for various anthropogenic and anthropogenic development activities such as increased urbanization deforestation and industrialization that resulting into aberrant weather events like changes in rainfall patterns frequent droughts and floods increase intensity and frequency of heat and cold waves causes of climate change there are no natural causes like continent drift volcanoes earth tilts 
ocean currents, intensity of solar radiation. Some anthropogenic causes are greenhouse gases, that is like CO2, methane, and nitrogen oxide, chlorofluorocarbons, ozone, water vapor, and land use, change deforestation and urbanization. These are the causes for climate changes. The global warming is accepted to lead the other regional, sorry, effect of climate change. That is what are the effect on global, that due to increased temperature, it is also rising sea levels, habitat damage and species affected, changes in water supply. So it directly influenced the development and growth of the insect-based populations. In agriculture, how it affects the climate change in agriculture, that global climate change can affect survival through the direct and indirect effect of the crops, soils, livestock, and pests. If there is an increase in temperature, it can reduce the crop duration, so it is increase the crop respiration rates, alter photosynthesis partitioning to economic products, affect the survival and distribution of pest populations, has a nutrient mineralization in soils, decrease farm use, fertilizer use efficiencies, increase evapotranspiration rate, and increase in atmospheric CO2 level will have a fertilization effect on crop with photosynthetic pathway and thus will promote their growth and productivity. So, what are the different changes in the climatic factors that affect upon the agriculture? Now, on pests, so plants and insects that is directly depend on the climate factors. Temperature, humidity, radiation, participant, precipitation, relative humidity, carbon dioxide, water growth and development. Current knowledge suggests that climate change can alter plants and insect development and affect their infections. Insect pests will become more abundant through a number of intra related processes, including range extensions and phenological changes, as well as increased rate of population development, growth, migration, and own veterinary. So, if the greenhouse gases emission that is increased, that's carbon dioxide, methane, or nitrogen oxide, it will lead to climate change and that is impact on agriculture like adaptation, migration, and vulnerability. So, increasing Social, societal, environmental, and economic pressure forced to develop new agricultural pace management tactics. We have to change our pace management tactics as per the changing climates. In the interdisciplinary approaches, have the aim to find the way how the environmental depletion caused by the use of chemical can be decreased, how the productivity can be increased, or by reducing intrinsic and pace damage to cultivated crops, and how the competition with wheat can be reduced. Improved techniques. For managing pests require weather and insect data from true maintain monitoring as well as climate information and forecast to determine the suitability. Chen and his co-worker investigated the integrated effect of insect infection, management practices, carbon cycle, and climatic factors both at regional and global level, and found that each additional degree of temperature rise could cause yield loss from insect pests to increase by further 10 to 25%. So now, what is the impact of climate change in insect? We know that there are two types of factors, that is biotic and abiotic factors. Biotics, that is our availability of food, competition, and natural enemies. These are the biotic factors. But abiotic factors, that are the temperature, humidity, rainfall, carbon dioxide, wind speed. So these are the a body factor or density in is also called the density independent factors. So climate change has increased space population and that damage potential by expanding distribution. By expanding distribution means when there is a climate change, the climate, the what are the space population are there, they migrate to the newer area. So that expanding distribution, enhancing survivability. What are the climates are suitable for them? They survive there and allowing to develop the adaptability of insect pests. Rising temperature, modified precipitation patterns, disturbed gaseous competition of atmosphere are causing the change in population, mobility, and behavior of insect pests. Climate and weather can substantially influence the development and distribution of insects. Changes in climate may result changes in geographic distribution, increased overwintering period of the insects, changing in population great rates. I also 
aware you that population intact population growth that is that depend on that number of generation per year sex ratio etc so where they are changing in the type climatic condition so growth rate is also been changing similarly over entering that is diapause condition hibernation condition it also depart due to that changes in the climate increase in the number of generation if there is a more hot temperature then sucking pace like epid acid they have short duration period to our life cycle in winter it is long even helicor parmigera are also complete their life cycle in short period if there is a warm climate is there so it is the changing of the climate so number of when there is short life cycle the number of generation per year has been increased extension of the development season changes in crop plant synchrony or phenology what are the attack of pest that is stages of the crop and pest attack their synchrony or phenology changes in interspecies infection and increased risk of evasion by migrant pest here some scientists have published the result that air and lombardo have shown that climate change has direct effect on the development and survival of herbivores and pathogens physiological change in tree defenses and indirect effects from changes in the abundance of natural enemy so in sometimes there is an absence of natural enemy the pest attack also be more so example parasite and insect herbivores similarly similarly materialism is also has been changed that benefited to each other so in same factors of the reproduction and competitors because of the short life cycles of insect mobility reproductive potential and physiology sensitivity to temperature even modest climate change will have rapid impacts on the distribution and abundance of many kinds of insects so if there is a change in the climatic factors that are mobility of the insects even reproductive potential and in hot condition it can lead maximum eggs so physiological sensitive temperature is can be also be changed migrant pest also be changed so global climate change can impact on plant pest or depend combined effect of climate these are the what are the climatic factors they have, it is the combined effect with respect to crop the data suggests that elevated carbon dioxide may have many positive effects including yield stimulation improved resources use efficiency more successful competition with weeds reduce ozone toxicity and in some case it also cause for better pest and disease resistance a major effect of climate warming in the temperate zone could be change in winter survival of insect pest however climate warming disturb the synchrony between temperature and photoperiod so climate warming it disturb the synchrony between temperature and photoperiod we also know that all the most of the insect pest have required some light period for have better growth and development but because insect and host plant species show individualistic response to temperature carbon dioxide and photoperiod their response to their different climate condition is different in different insects so it is expected that climate change will affect the temporal and spatial association between species interacting at different tropic levels climate change has been found to being a number of changes in the insect phenology distribution species interaction biodiversity the biodiversity of the insect can also be changed in the change in the climate other effects could be caused by climate change on insect include increase the number of genera i have already discussed changes in the crop pest synchrony increase over entry in is by migrants this impact of climate change can be positive negative or neutral there is no need that all the time the change in the climate will be a positive response or negative response but sometimes it is based on neutral response since this change can be decreased increase or have no impact on insect pest so what are the pests they have very short life cycle they are more or less neutral effect on impact of change in the climate so temperature effect the larval development time larval survival and early reproduction i have already told that in cooler days the life cycle is longer so larval development period is also be prolonged in case of hot hot, hot condition or warm condition it is de decreased so larval survival rate is also increased and early reproduction rate is also increased therefore there is a need to generate information on the likely effects of climate change on insect pest to develop robust technologies that will be effective in future under global global warming on climate change 
So, what are the data of the base population throughout the season? It is required for deciding the base press management strategy of particular insects. Insects are the most diverse group of the animals on the earth. It is estimated into 67, 10 hundred million. Estimated 570,000 species may go extinct by year 2100. And annual loss of rupees 8,63,884 billion due to insect pests in India, it has been estimated. Now, how is that respond to global warming? Insects are among the groups of organisms most likely to be affected by climate change because climate has a strong direct influence on their development, reproduction, and survival. Insects respond to global warming by bringing a number of changes among themselves. These changes may be phenological changes. What are the phenological stage? It has been changed due to changing in the climate. Distribution shift. So, what are the distribution of the insect? It may be changed due to the unsuitability of the climate and they survive at the new places. So, distribution shift also there. Change in special species infection, change in biodiversity of insect, species extinction, and change in migratory behavior of the insects. Here, insect migration. So, effect of climate change on insect migration can be analyzed to light trap data and field observation. Spark and scores that during 2007 analyzed the impact of climate on migration of lepidopter insect into England from southwest Europe. The number of migratory species was positively related to temperature. Anomaly average over March to July, and it was suggested that every one degree Celsius temperature additional migration of 14.5 plus minus 2.4 species to England. So, what are the impact of temperature that in every increasing in one degree temperature temperature the species migrate up to 14.42 plus 2.4 to a newer area here millions of dragon flies are flying throughout the miles from india to africa and insect in what it is the longest migration so The dragonfly migrated over several miles from India to Africa. Similarly, desert locust is are also always present somewhere in the desert between Mauritiana and India. But if good, good rainfalls and green vegetation develop, desert locusts can rapidly increase in number and within a month or two start to concentrate gradual switch unless checked can lead to the formation of small groups or bands of wingless hoppers and small group of swamp swim headers. So it is the it is also called outbreak and usually occurs within an area of about 5,000 square meter. So now what are the different impacts of different climatic factors on insects? So impacts of rising temperature. So abundance of insect paste will be enhanced by increased temperature and absences of insects are affected by changing temperature. Temperature is directly related to the insect growth and development. Above 45, it is lethal for an insect pest for survival and growth. So, so increase in the temperature, how they affect the incision effects of warming, include the potential for increased level of feed and growth. So if there is a warming, then increase the level of feeding and growth, including the possibility of additional generation. So if there is a feeding, is increased, growth is of increase. So there is a Look, generation per year, it says we also increase. This has serious impact on crop growth and also in the pest management scheme. Increased global temperature will also improve the phenology of insect. So, what are the different stages of insect? Is it to be also reduced or increased with the change in the climatic condition? It includes early arrival of insect pests in the agricultural habitats and emergence time of a range of insect pests. It causes <coughs> change in diversity and abundance of insect pests changing in geographical distribution of insect pests, increased overwintering of insects, rapid population growth and number of generations, introduction of alternative host plants. So in case of rise temperature or warm condition is also increased. If there is a new pest, new host plants, so there is a chances of introduction of alternative host plants. Changes in the host plant resistance it may be breakdown or increase. So, host plant resistance also be decreased. Changes 
increase risk of invasive pest species so what are the minor pests there is a germs and dissemination of insect transmitted disease what are the disease viral disease bacterial disease these are transmitted through vector that is insect vector it also there is a chances of emergence and dissemination of insect transmitted diseases increase level of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a notorious gas always associated with climate change increase level of carbon dioxide has always been the subject in the study carbon dioxide involves in increasing pest population increment by intervening the plant nutrition composition it is balancing the plant nutrition composition so that is if there is an increase in co2 then population insect population might be increased plant consists primarily of carbon and elevated co2 levels allow them to grow more rapidly because they can assimilate carbon more quickly increase the carbon dioxide is often understood as increase in photosynthetic rate so food will be more concentration this allow the situation where the availability of, of host is ensured for insect even in harsh condition consequently it induces the condition where pest incidence is increased so when there is a food is abundant then there is a chances of increasing the pest incidence cotton afi survival in significantly increase with increase carbon dioxide concentration so here is the example that cotton afi that is a gossipy apis gossipy may become a more serious pest under an environment with elevated carbon dioxide concentration because of increased survival rate of apis and longer development time of lady beetle because due to increase in carbon dioxide level the lady beetle takes longer period for the development so there is a decrease in, in the population of lady beetle that is natural enemy so why the apid population may be increased change in precipitation that is rainfall patterns change in amount intensity frequency of precipitations are also indicators for the changing in the pest population if there is a high rainfall high intensity frequent rainfall said they affect the pest population and pest attack for species that over increase in soil are directly affected by the overlapping precipitation if there is a frequent precipitation are there rainfall are there that what are the insect that over increase in the soil they are directly affected it affect the diapause that is the resting period of insect heavy rainfall causing flood and prolonged stagnation of water trim the survival of insect if there is a prolonged stagnation of the water then there is a chances that affect the diapause of the insect moreover eggs and larvae of insect may be washed away in case of there is a heavy intensity of the rain so eggs and larva of particular insect may be washed away by heavy rainfall and by flood under heavy showers small pests such as aphid jessica that is sucking pests like aphid jessica white fly mites thrips they may, they also may be washed away due to for heavy showers so precipitation or directly play important role in population growth incidence of heliobar parmigiana that is american bollworm is reported to increase in higher rainfall in november generally if there is a higher rainfall in november then the fecundity that is egg laying capacity of heliobar parmigiana is reported the deviation of not professional pattern but some species are not affected by change in pattern of rainfall that is coccidia licornis formicula was seen unaffected by changes rainfall pattern as well as some species are positively affected by increased rainfall like spodoptera is seen in higher in groundnut cotton chilies and coriander in enhanced rainfall so if there is a rainfall of high then in groundnut cotton chilies and coriander there is a population of spodoptera litura might be increased so here my student they have then concludes make conclusion during that the research research work that there was a significant positive correlation with bss brain science hour what are the climatic factors that how they impact on insect growth and development so there was significant positive correlation with brain science hour maximum temperature mean temperature vapor pressure deficient and wind speed means what are the increase in this such climatic factors the population of thrips in onion might be increased similarly 
relative humidity evening and relative that is morning and evening relative humidity and evening the papers are they have seen significantly negative correlate if the relative humidity or vapor pressure decrease there is chances to increase in the population of thrips barot in 2011 he also correlated the thrip population on chile chile with the different weather characters that thrip population significantly negatively correlated with rainfall we have i have already told that with the higher intensity or frequent rainfall there is a negative impact because second place might be washed away so they have negative impact minimum temperature also also have negative impact relative humidity vapor pressure in have negative impact on thrip population chilly similarly bright signs and hours maximum temperature vapor pressure deficit they have significantly positive correlation with thrip population in chilly so what are the increase in the temperature maximum temperature so peak that at like chilly on thrips also be increased similarly say 2000 in 2001 in brinjal that epic population significantly negatively correlated with rainfall temperature pattern minimum temperature relative humidity vapor pressure and wind speed in brinjal while jacid and white fly population significantly positively here epic so negatively correlated but jacid and white fly population significantly positively with bright signs hours have both the phase were significantly negatively correlated with rainfall temperature relative humidity vapor pressure minimum pressure and wind speed in brinjal so impact of different climates on different plant canopy or different crop it might be also a different in chile it increase in the temperature then thrips may be decrease while here the sucking phase can be decrease covered in 2015 on chile or sorry in okra the population of okra mai tetranis artis had significant positive correlation with minimum temperature morning relative humidity evening relative humidity and mean relative humidity in okra so if there is an increase in the climate factor the population of mite also be increased in okra by patel in 2017 that epic jason and white fly population had significant positive correlation with temperature and evaporation rate the epic population was significantly negatively correlated with mean relative humidity the mite population had significant positive correlation with maximum temperature minimum temperature and mean temperature if there is a warm or hot or dry condition then mite population also be increased what are the changes in the climate that impact on the pest population so if there is changes in the temperature or humidity how they could impact on the pest population so they are significantly negative correlation means decrease in this climatic factors there is a increase in the pest population makwana in 2017 in kaupi in larval pole border that was significantly positive correlated with temperature and evaporation while none have none of the parameters had is influence on flower damage to pole border we also i have already discussed that they have climatic factor have positive negative or neutral impact here what are the mar impact of maruta that the attack of maruta maruka vitrata on pole and on flower but flower damage is not impact or this is a neutral impact of climatic factors of the larva of maruka on kaupi the population of lady beetle was significantly positive correlated with big max temperature badani in 2019 that brand sense hours maximum temperature and evaporation was significantly positively correlated with wind speed rainfall and rainy days showed significant negative correlation with larval population of h armigera whereas maximum temperature and brand sense hours have showed significant positive correlation with larval population e automosa in pigeon that is increase in the temperature there is also chances to increase in the population of armija in pigeon bee but on same scientist same in 2019 the larval population of pale boetectus significantly positively correlated with maximum temperature bss and evaporation whereas wind pace wind speed was significantly negatively correlated with m optusa that is port fly population were significantly negative correlated with relative humidity temperature rainfall and rainy days so what are the differences that they have they have given their conclusion that what are the effect 
in changes in the climatic factors then what are the impact on the growth and development and population on attack of the pest on various crops now possible of impact of climate change on insect that is expansion of geography ranges because due to sudden changes in the climatic condition there is a expansion of geography ranges so the insect can be survived what are the suitability of the temperature increase overwintering survival increase in number of generation risk of introducing invasive alien species breakdown of host plant resistance increase incidence of insect vector plant disease reduce effectiveness of transgenic crop for pest management reduce effectiveness of pest management strategies and impact of the activity and abundance of natural enemy so first expanse of geographic ranges alter temperature and drain for Resign with the sudden change will determine the future distribution, survival, and reproduction of the species of different insects. Rising temperature, insect pests are actively active. That I already discussed. The geographic range also increased from tropic to subtropic to temperature. This may lead to sudden outbreak of insect pests where they not survive. Warming in temperature may lead to decrease the sent the temperature sensitive insect population. Climatic warning and increased drought incidence is expected. even no range extension is migrant species like helicorma armigera in north india is predicted with global climatic warning subsequently this ongoing shift in insect pest distribution and range due to changing climate may alter regional structure diversity and functioning of ecosystems similar generation years in hot i already discussed that in warm climate or hot climate the total life cycle period is reduced and it is prolonged in winter season so it is also in impact and increase the number of generation as temperature being the single most important regulating factor of generation global increase temperature with certain favorable ranges may accelerate the rate of development that the insect growth development rate faster reproduction rate and survival in tropics and subtropical insects consequently insect will be capable of completing more number of generation per year and ultimately it will result in more crop damages risk of introducing invasive alien pests according to convention of biological diversity cbd the insects are greatest threat to the loss of biodiversity in the world and impose high cost of agriculture forestry and aquatic ecosystem it is expected that global warming may accelerate ecological consequences like introduction of a new pest by alerting phenological events like flowering times especially in temperate plant species as several tropic, tropical plants can withstand the physiological changes invasive of new insect pests will be turn a major problem so the minor pests they may become to chance a major problem with changing climate favoring the introduction of new insect susceptible cultivars on crops insect pest population dynamics and outbreak so climatic variable change lead to increased frequency and intensity of outbreak of insect pest it may result in upsetting ecological balance because of unpredictable changes in the population of insect pest along with their existing and potential natural enemies outbreak of sugarcane woolly aphid in sugarcane belt of karnataka and maharashtra state during 2002 to 3 resulted in 30% yield loss so this is the increase of population of woolly aphid This situation of increase and frequent pest damage to the crop have made another big hole in the pockets of already dis distressed farms by increasing the cost of plant production and reducing the margin of the profit. So, if there is an increase in the pest population or population dynamics, then there is an increase in the plant production cost. Breakdown of host plant resistance. Expression of the host plant resistance is greatly influenced by environmental factors. that is temperature sunlight soil moisture air pollution in stressful environment plant become more susceptible to attack by insect pests in case of thermal and drought stresses it is associated breakdown of plant resistant in plants with global temperature rise and increased water stress so yield loss in sorghum due to breakdown the resistant again mitch and spotted stem borer so if there is a thermal and drought stress so there is a increase the population increase the breakdown resistant in gall mitch and spotted tumbler so there is a yield loss in sorghum the environmental factors like high temperature affecting transgenic expression of bt cotton resulting in reduced production of bt oxen if there is a increase in the temperature throughout the season 
So what are the gene, methyl gene, that the resistance against the ballworm that will be decreased? So the susceptibility of crop to insect pests like ballworms can be increased. So if there is a BT gene the decreasing, then there's a pest population increase. Increased incidence of insect vector plant disease. So climate change may lead to more incidence of insect transmitted plant disease through range expansion and rapid multiplication of insect vector. Like most of the vectors are sucking pest, and in this of hot climatic condition, there is a more generation in the year. So more pest population, the attack of the chance of more pest, then the, it also causes the back transmitted the viral disease as a vector. Increased temperature, particularly in early season, have been reported to increase the incidence of viral disease in potato due to early collection of wire bearing aphid. So aphid is a vector for potato viral diseases. So, so increased temperature is also suitable for aphid development. And so the potato virus in Nordinovirus has been increased. Here is some example of pest outbreak relation to climate change. In sugarcane, sugarcane fully aphid due to the abnormal bitter parameters and insecticide misuse. In rice, plant hunt, plant hopper, that is brown plant hopper, Nila powder lugans, and Sogatella fusipola in North India. It is also due to the abnormal bitter patterns and insecticide misuse and crop failure over more than 30,000 hectares of paired area. Millibugs in cotton, vegetables, and ornamentals. Here also abnormality in bitter patterns, insecticide misuse. Change in cropping environment, so introduction of BTG. So heavy yield loss, that is 30 to 40 percent, to the cotton and increased cost of cost protection. Similarly, papaya millibug in papaya in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Maharashtra, it is also there is an outbreak due to the alternate weather pattern and insect misuse, and significantly yield loss the papaya growers. So here is the example of pest outbreak and losses in the yield due to the climate change. Now, climate change and future challenges in India. So, there has been further shift in the status of several impacts that affect the interests of transgenic crops. The pest scenario on cotton ecosystem is changing fast by multitude of a pest. American and spotted ballworm attain secondary space status, but the sucking pest and even pink ballworm, tobacco caterpillar, midrip bugs, millibugs, aphid, jessie, sucking pest, they have taken a first position and First position status in case of cotton while introduction of BT cotton. Various species of millibugs have started appearing in a serious proportion in field crops and vegetables, fruits, and ornamentals due to the climatic changes. Millibugs have become indigenous insect from 2002 to 2005. Sugar can only that is outbreak in Maharashtra in 2002. The effect of changing climate of insect, the effect on time it lacks biodiversity mapping in insect agronomic region, it should be considered. Sir. Detailed understanding of the biology and the population dynamics of major insect pests under changing climate would help in developing better and efficient pest control practices in relation to climate. Development or forwarding forwarding system based on short well as long-term studies on population dynamics in migration pattern of insect would work ultimately help in formulating robust management strategy. So population dynamic study throughout a longer period, that is five to six years or 10 years, that is long-term study, we can forewarn the farmers for their insect pest attack. The exact impact of climate change on insect and pathogens are rather uncertain. We sing happy birthday to positive So it may be uncertain. But disease of IPM practices such as field monitoring, pace forecasting, record record keeping, and choose economically and environmentally sound measures will help in dealing with the effects of climate change. So how we have to decide the pace management practices? That is strategy. Since insects are molecular organism, so they are sensitive to surrounding temperatures, increased climatic temperatures. It needs more in insecticide application because of the likelihood to the presence of additional pest species. Earlier error of migratory pests. So it requires frequent exercise application. It has been shown that pyrethroid insecticide and spinocide are not as effective in killing insects at high temperature because spinocide are animal origin insecticide. So bactericide, they so 
they lose their efficacy under high temperature similarly biology and life cycle of several arthropods like will keep attaining under change in climate for climate that ultimately could affect their successful pest management practices including culture control biology control and chemical control so it has been also affected so now modified tactics of pest management relation to climate change what you to the effective pest management tactics according to their climate change so some pests could increase in importance other decrease and some new pests emerge due to their climate change condition a corollary it is is that such changes would disturb established pest management practices and create need for new or modified tactics that is breeding climate resistant varieties it is the best for that resistance against some insect pests for increase the yield alternation in sowing day so make, make unsynchronizing between the stage of the crop and insect attack or pest attack rescheduling of crop calendar gis based risk mapping of crop pest screening of pesticide with novel mode of action because what are the routinely used insecticides they have make a break resistant develop resistant against some insect pest so screening of pesticide with novel mode of action is required breeding climatic resistant varieties to minimize the impact of climate and other environmental changes it will be crucial to breed new varieties for improve resistance to abiotic and biotic factors consider the last late onset and or shorter duration of winter there is change of delaying and shortening the growing season for certain rabi crop or cold season crop so variety for rabi season or cold season crop can be developed hence we should concentrate the breeding varieties suitable for late planting and those can sustain adverse climate condition for pest and disease incidents so in this i have already told that it makes a synchrony between the vulnerable stages of the crop and pest attack so we have to cause changing in the sowing so it make a synchrony between pest and disease pest and stage of the crop rescheduling of crop calendar certain effective culture practices like crop rotation and planting dates that affect on non effective in control in case space hence here the, there is a need to change the crop calendars according to the change in crop environment the growers of the crop have to change insect management strategy with accordance with the projected changes in pest incidence and accession of crop losses in view of the changing climates gis based risk mapping of crop pest it is enabling technology for entomologists that help in relating insect pest outbreaks to biographic and physiographic features of the landscape hence can best be utilized in area wide pest management programs how climate change will affect development in the and population dynamic of insect pest can be studied through gis by predicting and mapping trends of potential changes in geographic distribution of agricultural ecological hotspots and future areas of pest risk screening of pesticides so neonicotinoids it is the base for sucking pest so it should be screened against a different pest this gives you an insight into investing role of insecticide in, in enhancing stress tolerance in the plants so what are the molecules there are need to be identified for a particular crop and for a particular pest other strategies that is evolve temperature tolerance strength of natural enemy development of weather and post pest forecasting models developing early warning system decision support system awareness regarding impact of climate change adoption of mitigation and adaptation measures sensitization of stakeholders about climate change and its impact farmers precipitary research to for enhancing adaptive capability promotion of resource conversion technology so they may helpful for management of different insect pests so conclusion in india pest damage varies in different agricultural region across the country mainly due to the different impacts of abiotic factors understanding abiotic stress response in crop plants insect pests and their natural enemy is an important and challenging topic ahead in agricultural research understanding abiotic stress response in crop plants sorry impact of climate change on crop production mediated through changes in population of serious insect pests need to be given careful attention for planning and diversifying adaptation and mitigation strategy for future pest management program 
climate change being a virtual process that give us opportunity to modify existing practices. Basics of IT practices such as field monitoring, pace forecasting, record keeping, choosing economically and environmentally sound control measures would help in dealing with the effect of climate change. Understanding how climate change will impact on various pace, especially crop pace, help agriculture scientists to orient their research on various futuristic possibilities that can help in mitigating and adapting to methods of anticipating climate change. What can we do in future? So development and validation of weather-based pace disease forecasting methods for Indian conditions to serve as early warming system, breeding for pace disease tolerant cultivars need to be initiated. Studies need to be initiated on changes on host physiology, pace life cycle, and host pair infection caused by changing parameters. So thank you. Now it's situ over to Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jay, sir. Yes. For uh, such a uh, knowledgeable session share with us. So two participants are uh, sending a question in uh, chat box. Yes. Uh, take just Here it is not visible. Please. Please you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes. Please you. Mr. Dhiman, Dhiman Kumar. Yeah. Question is, uh, what is the relationship between powdery mildew and uh, weather parameter in uh, mango? No, I cannot surely answer, but when there is a high temperature or low humidity, that will favor the abundance of the powdery mildew in mango. Because oh. it is, uh, yes, second question. And uh, second question, uh, Mr. Sarabjot Kaur. Uh, can we use any simulation model for forewarning of pest or this region or particular locality? But we have the data of disease and pest for a longer period. So what are the impact of different climate changes on different insect pest attack or population growth? By such type of data, we can able to forewarn or to forecast to any type of model in a particular area. Because within a two or three years data, we cannot forecast of any model. Hello, okay? Ah, okay, sir. Uh, okay, thank you, Jay, sir. Uh, so, I would like to uh, invite to all for valedictory function and uh, I hand over to Dr. Tushar, sir. Thank you, Dr. J.J. Patel, sir, for sharing the most valuable information regarding insect pest uh, management in reference to climate change uh, scenario. Uh, sir, uh, participants are asking for uh, your presentations. Uh, it is very resourceful. That's why they are asking. So if you permit me, we will share your presentation with the participants. Sure, sure. We can. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you for your nice deliberations. Without taking much time, I I invite all the participants to join the validatory functions. Dr. Didi Patel, sir, may I proceed for validatory functions? Participants are requested to bear with us for a few minutes. Uh, the dignitaries will soon join the validatory sessions. Yes, uh, Dr. Tusar Patel, please go ahead. Yes, Dr. Tusar Patel, please go ahead for validatory function. Okay. And also here, uh, Dr. Sarkar sir is also joined with us. So. Uh, you okay, can go. Okay. No, okay, okay, okay. So again, good afternoon to all 
dignitaries, guests, speaker, delegates with glad, joy, and immense pleasure. Thank you for continuing joining us for today's webinar. I am organizing secretary. Happily welcome all of you on validated functions of the today's webinar that is on impact of climate change in agriculture. It is my honor to welcome our president, Dr. K. G. Patel, sir, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture and Principal College of Agriculture, Navsari Agriculture Union, Navsari, Campus Baruch, on behalf of the organizer and on my personal behalf. We are also look forward for the presence of Dr. Didi Patel, sir, Professor and Head, Department of Agronomy and Convener of the webinars. I am also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Jayan Sarkar, sir, Director, Meteorological Center, Ahmedabad. Sir is constantly attend all the technical sessions. So I welcome on valedictory functions of today's webinars. Now I invite Dr. Jayan Sarkar, sir, for share their views on the technical sessions in today's webinar. The platform is yours, sir. Dr. Jayan Sarkar, sir, please unmute, un unmute yourself. Am I now audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Am I audible now? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for arranging such a nice uh, webinar and on such an important topic. Uh, and uh, really, this kind of and what I understand is that your uh, institute has organized. Uh, I think this is the sixth webinar, so this kind of effort should be there. And definitely, in uh, uh, wherever this kind of effort is there, definitely I am there with you. There is no issue. Now, regarding this, uh, a few words, just I would like to tell that uh, regarding this Gramin Krisi Mausan Seba, in which this is the IMD's uh, project, in which all these agricultural universities are also involved, as presented by Dr. Niraj Kumar. What I want to say is that IMD Ahmedabad, uh, IMD Gujarat, we have taken a lot of initiative this year. And every week, twice, you know, every, every Tuesday and Friday, Friday, conduct a video conference with our MFUs, KVKs, and Damus. You know, the, a lot of participants are there. And we, in, in detail, about half an hour that meeting goes on. And in details, we discuss about the uh, coming weather scenario for the coming five days. So uh, it, it is very much helpful for our agricultural experts uh, to have a clear view about the uh, coming forecast, you know. And uh, it really helps them to formulate, formulate the agreement advisory services for their district, for their blocks, as well as for their for their region as well. Further, I'd like to tell that <clears throat> uh, uh, currently we have been giving our uh, extended range forecast for about say up to four week period. And uh, I would like to give you this information that our extended range forecast currently is for uh, uh, up to the meteorological subdivision level. Now we are making an effort, you know, we are making an effort to give the extended range forecast even up to the district level. So it will be very much useful for you because if you get the information that what is likely to happen after after first week or uh, after second week or after third week or up to fourth week, you know, what kind of information, uh, what kind of weather can be there, so what kind of weather trend is likely to be there in the coming weeks uh, at, uh, at district level, it will be very much helpful uh, for you people uh, to 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 frame the advisories in a much better way. So this is the information just I wanted to give, and we have a definitely we have a very good understanding uh, with the government of Gujarat, with the different agricultural universities, and our uh, I I I, uh, I I appreciate uh, the uh, the concerned authorities of the uh, different agriculture universities to make this GKMS project a, a, a quite a big success, and definitely we'll will will be always. Uh, help you uh, to to make it a big success, and I, and I basically believe that in future also uh, we should take up this kind of webinar on relevant topics in which uh, where weather is there, I am definitely I am readily available to you. Thank you very much. With this word, just I'd like to again thank you all for arranging this uh, nice webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jayan Sarkar sir, for your wise words. Uh, sir, you have. I am also thankful to you for appreciating and acknowledge our work regarding GKMS project. Sir, your we are accepting your suggestions regarding uh, the GKMS project uh, for further betterments. 
and uh, your lecture is really very resourceful. So we are highly enlightened with your uh, gracious talk, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, may I request our president, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, for his presidential address and remarks. The platform is yours, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, now, at the end of this today's webinar, uh, first of all, I will say uh, congratulate to all the organizers, members, and uh, I will also congratulate and uh, say some words those who are delivered the lectures. First of all, I, I would say there, Dr. James Sarkar, uh, the director, director in charge Meteorological Center, Ahmedabad. He has given a very nice talk on climate change and its impact over India. Sir, you have given a very, very good talk. Your expertise in the subject itself will reflect, indicate the remarkable uh, lectures, and it will be useful to the uh, students, faculty members, and those who are working with the uh, meteorological department and uh, in the GMS projects. Actually, uh, your uh, visionary approach and your lectures there are so, so many innovative ideas are, are there that can be you definitely useful to the uh, those who are working in the meteorological uh, departments because uh, everywhere we are talking about the effect of the climate change to the agriculture. Even not in agriculture, but in many sectors, climate is affecting so many ways. And uh, as uh, many uh, experts said there, the climate is not affecting only agriculture, but it affects only on so many living organisms that are directly or indirectly um, uh, associated, associated with the human being. So definitely there should be some solution. Even in the, uh, the solution is there that the remote sensing and uh, satelliting that can identify the uh, ecological big area that can be helpful to rectify and it can be useful for the farmers community also. So uh, again, you have provided very good information to the research worker, and uh, uh, your uh, even your center is also doing very doing very well uh, in the in terms uh, of forecasting. That can be definitely helpful to the, the farmers also. And uh, uh, the next speaker, Dr. Manoj Lunagaria, uh, he also talked given on the impact of climate change on crops. So there are a number of the crops, and they are also vulnerable to the climate change. Actually, due to the uh, due to the bad effect of the climate, there is a lot of uh, biodiversity in the nature. Actually, one thing is that the God is also running through the rules and regulations. So nature has to follow the rules and regulations. But when there is intervention by the human beings in the nature, then there may be something wrong. So we are facing the problem due to, due to the climate change in many ways. A number of the uh, scientists, number of the meteorological scientists have predicted that if we will not prevent these uh, things, then uh, coming days will be very bad for the humankind. So again, he also narrated so many things on the impact of climate change on the crops, particularly cereal crops, because as we know that uh, the, uh, the level of the reducing yield of the crops due to the uh, bad effect of the climate change is very it, it, it was comparable with the uh, increasing uh, growth of the population because our population is also growing very fast. So it will not be combined if you will not do something for the climate change. Now, our uh, third lecturer, that is uh, Dr. Neeraj Kumar, he is working in the GKMS project and he is also a very good expert and he is a very experienced person. So he given a use of Gramin Krishi Mosam Seva project for farmers. So this is also one of the good projects of the government and it is working very well for the farmers because uh, after all the agriculture uh, crop and the farmers are depending upon the forecasting systems because this uh, due to the help of this project the, uh, we are forecasting for the farmers on Tuesday and Friday. So very quick information given to the farmers and they can do something uh, for their crops for the better yield. So uh, again, this project is uh, working very well and Dr. Neeraj Kumar has elaborated this project in, in a very broad way for the uh, use of the farmers and faculty members and students also. Again, as we told that the, uh, if there is a good crop, but if you will not manage the insect pest uh, properly, then uh, farmers cannot get, cannot get better. Yield. So uh, insect pest is also 
directly or indirectly correlated with the weather parameters. Number of the weather parameters, Dr. J.J. Patel has elaborated so many weather parameters, that is the temperature, wind velocity, maximum, minimum, relative humidity, because these factors are directly connected with uh, for the uh, population increase. So the, and uh, for the management of the this insect pest, we have to use a number repeated spray of the pesticide. So uh, of course it can increase the cost of the cultivation. So again, meteorological with the help of the meteorological data, we can able to manage the insect pest population because number of the pest population, the dormancy period, the carryover period depend upon the so many weather parameters. So uh, again, Dr. J.J. Patel has also and good very give give information for the point of view of the students, farmers, and uh, stakeholders, those who are working with the agriculture. So over and all, the team Bharu under the uh, coordinated program for Dr. Didi Patel, Professor and Head Economy Department, and his associated persons like Neeraj Kumar, Dr. Tusar Patel, Dr. Hiran Patel, Dr. Vaishali, and uh, uh, holds the team of the Department of Agronomy. Even our IT uh, persons, Dr. Alok, uh, Alok Srivastava, also managed this uh, program very well. Way. So I all, uh, on behalf of me, on behalf of the College of Agriculture, uh, from the Dean desktop, I congratulate to all of you. And uh, again, I can say that you have did a very good job for the series of seminars, webinars at the College of Agriculture. And I, I can say that this is a very good platform for your career development also. And ultimately, this will be benefited to, uh, in the broad sense, for the students, farmers, uh, stakeholders, faculty members. So again, congratulations to all the organizers. Thank you again. Once again, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your word of appreciation. Actually, we are able to do these types of work because of your constant support, your guidance, uh, that make it possible to do all the success events, sir. So now, uh, this is the time to invite, to propose a word of thanks. So I invite Dr. H.H. H. Patel to propose a word of thanks at the end of the webinar. Thank you to Sar Patel for proposing the word of thanks. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all. Respected Dean, Faculty of Agriculture and President of the webinar, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. Respected convener, Dr. Didi Patel, sir. Respected head of VDS department of this college, VDS key speakers, and my DS participant who have joined across the India. I am Dr. Hiran Patel, Assistant Professor Agronomy. It is a great pleasure to me to propose a word of thanks to all who have helped us in, in grand success to organize this webinar, Impact of Climate Change and Agriculture. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a surrounding success. On behalf of organizing team and my own behalf, I would like to propose sincere thanks to our webinar Chief Patron Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. J.P. Patel sir for gracing today's inaugural function of webinar. Thank you sir for your very interesting and through provoking address. I am sure that all the participants have taken note of your suggestion and will be discussing within their organization the action to be initiated at their level. I am highly thanked to patron of this web webinar Dr. S.R. Chaudhary sir, Director of Research and Dean Peaches. He is always focal point of the university and inspires the faculty member of the for creativity. Next, I would like to thank the torchbearer of the event and president of this webinar, our respected dean and principal, Dr. K.G. Patel sir, for leading and inspiring us in working toward the goal of conducting this webinar. We are thankful to him for his huge support at all times. No event can take safe without a hard working leader. It was the dedication and enthusiasm of our leader and webinar convener, Dr. D.D. Patel, Professor and Head, Department of Agronomy, College of Agriculture, Baruch, which made his event a huge success. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for him. Conducted this webinar would have been impossible without the keen efforts of Dr. Niraj and Dr. Tusar, who has devoted lots of time and energy for this program. I am highly thankful to the organizing and technical team of Dr. Ajit Raj, Dr. Alok Srivastava, Dr. Swapnil, Dr. Vaisali, Dr. Manish, and Dawal, 
and many more for helping during organizing this wonderful webinar. I am also thankful to the IT department, Nausari Agriculture University, Nausari, as well as Dr. Alok Srivastava and his team for providing a wonderful platform for successfully organize this uh, webinar. My heartful thank to the head of various departments and the faculty of their valuable contribution, guidance, and encouragement in all our effort. We express our sincere thanks to non-teaching staff too. I am also thanks to the speaker, Dr. Jayad Sankar, sir, Director IMD Ahmedabad, Dr. Manoj Lunagariya, sir, Associate Professor NAU Anand, Dr. Neeraj Kumar, Assistant Professor NAU Baruj, Dr. Jayesh Patel, sir, Associate Professor NAU Baruj, for their enthusiastic participation in this webinar. I am very, very thankful to all the participants to take part across the nation in this webinar. I am sure that participants will have gained enough knowledge by attending this seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. H. H. Patel, for proposing a very nice word of thanks. Now, I request all the participants to switch on their video so we can take a screenshot for a, a memory. Bear with us for a few minutes. Dr. Tusar Patel. Very good. Thank you so much, all. With the permission of chair, uh, we'd like to uh, end of the sessions. Okay, Dr. Tusar Patel, uh, I am also. Uh, Patel, sir, proposed... please, if you permit, then we will declare the program is over. Uh, Dr. Tusar Patel. Actually, sir, your mic is off. However, I, I, I read your leaf words. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So I declare that the, this webinar is uh, concluded and this program is over. However, some of the query I observed uh, in chat box that uh, participants are concerned about the feedback link. So those who have uh, attend the technical session, definitely they will receive the feedback link uh, on their registered email address. Eventually they will receive the certificates. So don't worry about the feedback link and certificates. It will definitely reach to you soon. Uh, after sorting of the attendance and all these things. Thank you. Thank you so much and great day ahead.